in some regions so that we may present the following CBC Sports Special. The Waltons, Performance and Marketplace return next Sunday. The goal that sent the country into ecstasy as Paul Henderson scores with 34 seconds left in the game to beat Russia 6-5 and win the first big series for Canada. Two years later, and the Soviets came back against Team Canada 74, this time defeating players from the WHA. And now, Super Series 76, featuring the two best teams from the Soviet Union against the top NHL clubs. It's a first. Stars like Trichak, Parlamov, and the champions of Russia, the Central Red Army team, face Phil Esposito, Rod Gilbert, Peter Stemkowski and the New York Rangers. From New York City, the entertainment capital, it's game one. The champions of Russia meet their first challenge. Live from coast to coast on CBC, Hockey Night in Canada presents Super Series 76. Brought to you by... Imperial Oil and SO retailers, agents, and distributors. The Bank of Nova Scotia, coast to coast in Canada and in 37 countries around the world. And by Ford of Canada, on behalf of your Ford and Mercury dealers, coast to coast. Rangers. And this is a high for me to, uh, to be able to play the Russians once more because uh, it was a great series before, and, uh, and the fact that uh, we have a full team here and, uh, and that the Rangers didn't get off to a, a tremendous start, um, I'm looking, this game is really important for us to, uh, uh, to get things going on their way again, and, and I'm just looking forward to, to our great game and uh, to beat them. Welcome to the opening chapter of Super Series 76 on behalf of Bob Cole, Dick Irvin, Dave Reynolds, and a guest analyst, Harry Sinden of the Boston Bruins, this is Dave Hodge with Howie Meeker, and we've heard about uh, who we think is going to win. I want to know what kind of a game is it going to be, and what is the most important aspect to watch for? Well, I would think the Rangers haven't had much luck in defense this year. If they're going to win tonight's game, it's got to be a freewheeling, wide-open game, and that means goaltenders have to be number one. If the Army team is going to do anything in their four-game series, Trechek has to prove himself one of the top three goalies in the in the world, I would say, as good as Dryden or as good as uh, Perron. He's got that reputation now. Thank you very much, Howie. We're going to go now to Dave Reynolds, who is standing by with the aforementioned guest analyst, a man with uh, great experience in international hockey, of course, the managing director of the Boston Bruins, Harry Sinden. What do you think we're going to see tonight? Dave, I think we're going to see more shooting from the Soviet team than we've seen uh, in 72 and 74 series, uh, in particular from their defensemen uh, at the blue line. How about the trends in their style of hockey? Do you think that's changed? No, I don't think that's changed to any great degree, and they use uh, the interference play uh, very well. I think fans can watch for that, particularly on their power play, where they're very adept at uh, taking them uh, defensemen out of the play uh, in order to make room for the end coming forward. Terry Sinden, thanks very much. Now upstairs to Bob Cole and Dick Irvin. and 74 series you've got those pronunciations down uh, pretty well is it a little bit difficult other than the names to broadcast the Soviets do you have to get a pace as opposed to our North American hockey I don't think so uh, it, it's just that well here in Madison Square Garden we are at a disadvantage we're so far away but they're so patterned to their play they stay to their wings the defenseman of course is you know line up with each line and that makes it a little easier we're gonna have some special opening ceremonies so we'll go down to ice level now for the pregame ceremonies On behalf of the National Hockey League and the New York Rangers, and in the spirit of good sportsmanship, Madison Square Garden is proud to present this evening a premier attraction in international hockey. As the 1975 champions of the Soviet Union, the Soviet Army team meet the New York Rangers.
This will be the first time a Soviet club has competed against a team from the National Hockey League. Certainly an is in historic event. Let us now meet the champions of Russia, the Soviet Army Club. Nikolai Adonian. Number two, Alexander Gusev. Number three, Vladimir Luchenko. Number four, Victor Kuskin. Number five, Valerie Vasilya. Number six, Inachi Tishyanka. Soloduki. Number nine, Alexander Volchkov. Number ten, Victor Kuchenko. Number 11, Boris Alexandrov. Number 12, Alexander Motsev. Number 13, Alexei Volchenko. Number 16, Vladimir Petrov. Number 18, Vladimir Vikulov. Number 21, Sergei Glasov. Number 22, Victor Shluktov. Number 17, Valery Heilemann. And the head coach of the Soviet Army team, Konstantin Lokter. Rangers, 
number 31, Doug Sokar. Number 35, John Davidson. Number five, Larry Satchera. Number 23, John Benoski. Number 25, Nick Beverly. captains will exchange gifts which personify goodwill and sportsmanship. saw a shot of the gifts that uh, are exchanged and are being exchanged right now between the Soviet Central Red Army team and the New York Rangers as hockey history is made in Madison Square Garden with a regular National Hockey League team meeting a team from the Soviet Union. 
And they tell us actually some hockey history in New York City as well. This is the very first major international game to be played in New York. In a salute to the two great nations represented here tonight. First, here is the anthem of the Soviet Union. of Super Series 76. Game one continues in just a moment. Five years of programs have taken Laurie Jennings and myself from Daniels Harbor, Newfoundland to Prince Rupert in British Columbia. For most, it's a lonely venture into a land of strange customs. We focused on the resources of this land, but realized that the real resource is the people. Our executive producer, John Lackey, conceives the ideas, and Laurie and I just love the opportunity to work with directors and film crews from all the regions of Canada to make the programs happen. What is the CBC program, This Land? Well, it's an electronic mirror that reflects the images of this country. I guess it's our way of bringing Canadians together. see there with the red armbands is Yuri Karandin of the Soviet Union. And the other officials from the National Hockey League, John D'Amico and Matt Pavlich. And now the referee, Yuri Karandin, goes to center ice. The goaltenders, Tretiak and Davidson. And Super Series 76 is underway with the puck going back to the Red Army zone, cleared out by Gusev, down the ice, in behind the Ranger goal. Rangers back to pick it up, and it's icing against the Red Army. Very happy to have Harry Sinden with us in the broadcast booth as the analyst. Harry, we heard that maybe there wasn't all that much interest down in the States for this series. I was very impressed with the crowd atmosphere when the introductions were made. A lot of excitement here tonight, Dick. I know in Boston they're looking forward to it. Esposito is at center ice for the Rangers with Vickers and Gilbert. Back of the line. Reschner just tapped it on the boards. It comes in front of Esposito. He took a shot. The Rangers won it up. And Esposito is in number one. Esposito all alone in the slot stick. Harry in 1972 took him 30 seconds to score the first one for you. It's taken the Rangers. 
Rangers 21 to get the first one tonight. Here it is, Harry. Goes all along when this play starts. There he is. And Vickers with the easy goal. Nice pass. Okay, one to nothing. The Rangers. And here they come again with Esposito slapping one. Tetiak loving it and hanging on. Harry, they had a lot of room to move around in front of that net there. The defense seemed to disappear. I know it. They didn't pay attention to Phil in the slot, and that, that's dynamite. Checking New York Rangers. Stamkowski centered into the creek. And Padney was tied up to the side of the net. The fans calling for a penalty. The play goes right off. And the Rangers, Middleton keeping it in. He took a weak shot. In front of the net, it's Luchenko coming out. His pass comes down, went by Vikulov. He couldn't hang on to it. And now Kachuk bodied out of the play. But he got back into it at center right. Kachuk coming down. His pass went into Stemkowski. He's offside, and the play is gone. They love the Rangers tonight in Madison Square Garden. They are the underdogs against the Central Red Army team. And there is one of the assistant coaches. That is Yenyam Alexandrov, a longtime star with the Soviet national team. They are traditionally the best in the Soviet Union. Esposito, you see number 12 on the ice again. He assisted on the goal by Vickers. One to nothing, New York. And the Red Army team, led by Malsev, didn't get very far, but now they poke it over the line. Kuzkin tapping it into the corner. Beverly, number 25 for New York, gets it handed back to him behind the net. Now Beverly nearly lost it in front of the goal, but he regained it in time. It's kept in by Saladukin. Now it's cleared to center ice. And this is Kuzkin for the Red Army. A long pass to center, didn't work. And the Rangers bring it back in again. On the wing is Polis. He took a shot, and Kretjak stopped it. It's behind the net. Betney trying to dig it in front, and feeling. McDonald's Quarter Pounder is a sure bet for big appetites. Thick, juicy, and great tasting. And that's the game. What a comeback. At McDonald's, we do it all for you. Play just underway again. And the Red Army failing to keep it inside the Ranger line. But there's a penalty coming up, and this is the first one of the game. It'll be against the New York Rangers. A tripping call coming up. And now the Red Army in control. Tretyak is out of the net, and here they come. It's Mikulov in over the line. On the left wing, he's bumped by Greshner. The play goes right on, and it's kept in by Vasiliev. A shot was blocked. They still have control of the puck. Down into the corner, and finally, Jarrett, or the Rangers, grabbing it, and the play is called, and the fans thought it should have been called earlier, but there it is. Harry, the first power play opportunity of the hockey game for the Soviet team. What can the fans look for right here? I think you can watch the Soviet team try to concentrate their power play on one side of the net in one, one of the big face-off circles and in the hopes of working a man free on the opposite side. They'll throw two men over on that one side, try to draw the New York defense over and either shoot their uh, other point men in from the point for the, for the open shot or work it to their sentiment. But we can watch for that. That's what they did in 72. It's Jaren off for hooking at 2.46. Petrov for the Red Army at center ice to take the face off. He'll be against Kachuk of the Rangers. 
Gusev and Vasilyev at the points. Harlamov gets it back. Vasilyev over to Gusev. Gusev didn't get a shot by Fairbairn, and he gave it to the Ranger at center ice. To shoot, he just hangs on to it, lays it back. Rangers killing some precious seconds on this Soviet team, and down the ice it goes. A minute 35 left in the penalty. They kill some time there, but here they come again. Petrov coming in over the line. Petrov a pass in front of the net, broken up. And it's again clear. Kachuk comes to center ice. Kachuk will kill some time again. He plays it back to the Rangers' own. And now, that day, he racks it a bit. That day nearly lost it, but he still has it. That's center. Down it goes to Fairbairn. Good stick handling. Now he loses it. And at center ice, Kachuk covering up again. Good defensive play by the New York Rangers. This is Batne at his own line. He really handled it well. Now it's cleared down the ice. And they're likely to get a standing ovation if they can hang on in this fashion. The Rangers changing on the goal. Esposito is in the play now. The pass by Petrov goes to center. And in they come. Gusev turning around near the line to Petrov. Petrov winding up. Had a stick left in. But the shot on the score. Right in front of the net. Alexandrov tying the game 1-1. He's the youngest player in the Soviet team here tonight. He's only 20 years of age. And excellent Harry, they let excellent it low shot. Through. Excellent low shot. Esposito almost lifted his stick before he got the shot away. Nobody to cover up for the rebound, and it slides under Davidson. We heard, uh, Dick, that they shoot much more from the points than they did uh, a couple of years ago, and there was a pretty good example of it. So, a power play goal. Boris Alexandrov scoring for the Red Army. 1-1 one, one tie now. That was a power play goal. Here's Esposito going in again. Oh! Gilbert had a great opportunity, and it went by him. Coming back. The Red Army team clearing it in over the line. Stopped in front. Slooked up. Couldn't get a shot. And Davidson hangs on to it for a face-off in the Ranger zone. Just to recap the scoring plays, it was Vickers from Esposito and Gilbert at 21 seconds. And then Alexandrov on the power play for the Central Red Army from Petrov and Gusev at 4.04. Face-off coming up in the Ranger zone. Slooked up at center ice for Red Army. Alexandrov. Playing on the left wing. Mikulov on the right side. Jankov skates up to the edge of the circle. But the Rangers with the draw. Jarrett coming out. Jarrett's pass off the boards went by Vickers. Now Esposito tipped it ahead. Vickers took a whack at it. Coming back quickly as the Jankov in the corner. He handles it on the boards. Loses it against Gilbert. Oh, that's Lightning speed. Esposito quickly let it go, but it was wide. Nikulov's pass stopped by Esposito. He's turning again. He shoots it in over the Red Army line and going back to Luchenko in the corner. Gilbert went after him. Now Esposito kicks it in to Gilbert. Gilbert with Vickers in front. And the quick stop to Esposito. Oh, that guy took it away from Esposito. He was right in on top of him. Now coming back, Alexandrov down the right side. A pass goes in to Shlukov right in front. Of Davidson, he had no chance. Miss him at one end, Harry, get it at the other. I know, it was too bad. A great play by Espo uh, and a good save by Trediak. But I'll tell you, Dick, that was the first three on two that the, the Russians had. And, and if you leave them too many of those, uh, uh, you're going to be in trouble. The first three on two they had executed perfectly. So there's the goal scorer, Vladimir Vikulov. He has two Olympic gold medals to his credit. These fellas can put him in the net. They've only had, I think, three shots, and they've got two goals. They lead two to one. Lots of excitement so far in this first period. And it's two to one Red Army. Popov back at his own line. Slides it to the other side. Red Army playing it back. Kuzkin, his pass down to center. Popov shoots it back in. Solodukin coming in. Solodukin barrels into the corner. Beverly is after him all the way. And coming back to help Davidson covering up. He grabbed it quickly as he reached from the crease. 5.18 the time of the goal. Big John Davidson, who had that sensational junior career in Calgary. He has played in 26 of the Rangers' 36 games this season. Zoladukin with Popoff and Malsev up front for Red Army. Kuzkin, Volchenkov, the defenseman. And from the draw, 
Dillon of the Rangers cleared it up over the line at center ice. Didn't go very far with it. Collins turning around near the center ice red line. He was bumped. They both go down. Solidukin and then Holland. And back for Kuzkin. Around his own net on the boards for Popov. He was stopped. Again, Dillon going in. Throwing some weight around, but coming out. Popov coming down the left side. Cutting in for a drive. They're offside. Malsad ahead of the play. Tonight's game is coming to you from Madison Square Garden. If you want your kids to learn to about Scotiabank Hockey College at the Bank of Nova Scotia. It's a grown-up idea just for kids. Come on, everybody, grow with us. The face-off coming up outside the Ranger line. Two to one the score, Red Army leading. The Rangers taking the lead first and giving up a power play goal. And then the go-ahead. It took 21 seconds for the Rangers to get on the scoreboard. Freshner comes out. His long pass to center. Out coming back. Mikhailov, he was stopped. And at center ice, Tempkowski gets the shot away. That low drive was wide. It's kept in by Walt Kachuk turning around. He's in control pretty well. His pass went by Stempkowski, though. Karlamov back in his own zone, back of the net. It's cleared out. getting penalized. This is Super Series 76 from New York. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Jones. TV Records presents the Tom Jones 10th Anniversary Album, a fabulous collector's edition. The great Tom Jones hits on two records, only $7.99. Two eight-track tapes, $10.99. From TV Records, available at participating outlets. Ron Greshner of the Rangers off for tripping at 720, and he really dumped Karlamov and the Soviet right winger. So Good by Karlamov, you know, he drew that penalty. He was around Greshner, and that's all he could do. Well, there's Greshner in the box, and the faceoff coming to the right of Davidson. He has to make a stop after that. Ball. Beverly sliced it on the board. Bear Bear trying to tip it out and hit a stick of Sakonkov and went over the board. Harry, I notice you're reacting as we sit here to the way the Soviets are getting the puck out of their own zone. They're doing it very well, and they're doing it with long passes. They've thrown a half a dozen 60-foot passes from deep in their own end up towards center ice. Now Batney, number two for the Rangers to Bear Bear. Down the ice it goes, and Sakonkov at his own line. His pass to Shluktov. Shluktov into center ice and coming in Vikulov. On the right side, putting the brakes on. In front of the net it comes. Gusev took a shot. It hit a leg. They keep it in, though. Luchenko on the boards. He centered it. Vikulov on the other side has it near the blue line now. Vikulov back to the line. Here's Sagankov. And that shot went off the stick. And Davidson got in front of it. Esposito waiting around in front of the net. Now it's cleared. Out over the line. Sagankov knocked it down with his glove, and he's in control. Here he comes. Gennady Sagankov speeding in. He's on the boards to the corner, centered it. Shliptov left it back in the blue line. They can't get a shot. Now it's Alexandrov near the boards in the corner. Alexandrov, he's a good newcomer for the Red Army. Right in front is pass, and Batney covered up, and it's still in. Sagankov laid it over in front of the goal. Once again, it's cleared by the Rangers. Down the ice. Beverly got his stick on it. 40 seconds left in the penalty. Around the net, Luchenko. Flip 
Lofton in front of goal. In it comes out to Petrov. A pass down to the wing. Mikhailov coming in. Mikhailov, number seven, left it at the line again. They pass it around beautifully. Harlamov along the boards. On the other side for Vasilyev. The shot is blocked by Vatne. Vatne will clear it now for the Rangers. As far as the line, now it comes out over at center ice. The score is 2-1. to one. Red Army leading. This is Harlamov at center. He couldn't go by. Seconds left of the penalty. Coming back, Vasilia for Red Army. Up to center is pass. Lamov is stopped. Now they bring it in again. Luchenko played it over near the line. And Stemkowski takes over. He's twisting and turning with the Rangers at full strength. Freshner stick handles away. He comes to center as he got by Mikhailov and cleared it in behind the Red Army net. Here's Gusev. He fired one on the boards to Harlamov. Coming down with Petrov over the line. Back to Harlamov. Shooting! And Davidson blocked that one. Two one Red Army leading. The Rangers trying to get it going again. Middleton racing up. He's offside at the Red Army blue line. Harry, another three and two break just a moment ago. That's what you said. That the Rangers they either have... score or force your goalie to make a good save, which Harlamov did on that three on two. And he, he just can't allow them uh, very many more of those. Number five, Vasiliev, one of the players added to the roster. He plays normally for the Moscow Dynamos. They have two players in uniform tonight, not normally members of the Central Red Army team. They played 9.53 of the first period. Two to one, Red Army. Rangers shoot it in. Red Army zone. It comes down the boards, covering up was Volchenkov. He clears it up to center ice, and there was Malsev. Malsev's pass to Popov and Kaladukin. This is Popov. Seven remaining in the first period. The score, the Soviet Red Army 2, the New York Rangers 1. It is a fact. In 4 to 24 hours after you've washed your hair, dandruff reoccurs. You just can't wash your dandruff problem down the drain. That's why Resdan is so effective. You leave it on after you wash your hair to control dandruff between shampoos. Resdan stays on all the time and works all the time, from shampoo to shampoo. Ron Greshner draws his second straight penalty. There have been three in the period, all drawn by the Rangers. It's a cross-checking call at 10-13. One of the two Soviet goals tonight, the first one by Alexandrov, came on a power play with Doug Jarrett in the penalty box. And now, once again, Red Army with a man advantage. Shluktov comes to center ice. Alexandrov and Mikulov. Zagankov, Luchenko on the defense. Cleared by the Rangers down the ice. Tretiak stopping it. He hasn't had too much to do over the past seven or eight minutes. Tretiak now on this power play. Mikulov coming in, dropping it back. Alexandrov gets set. Rifled it. The rebound is cleared back to the two-point man in the center ice area. Mikulov laid it back to his own line. Zagankov up to center ice. The candle's near the line. Can't go in. The Rangers line up to meet him. Now he drops it back. Luchenko is going to try it with Alexandrov. Alexandrov through center ice. He was stopped at the Ranger line. And Jared shoots it over on an open wing. Now again, Luchenko winding up his pass. Alexandrov lifted over to him again. Luchenko comes up near the line. Will he go in? He's with Mikulov, and he was really felt with Luchenko. He was dropped as he hit the Ranger blue line. Coming back, Sagankov. Back of his own net. Laid it over to Harlamov as they came on the goal. Harlamov, four check back deep. Now he starts out his pass is stopped again. Fairbairn left it at center ice. Harlamov tried to get away. Played it in. Across the line. He still has it. Harlamov, a real speedster, but his pass goes to center. 35 seconds left in the Ranger penalty. Vasilyev's pass to center ice. And it's Petrov playing it back. Harlamov going in, trying to fake his way through. And Vatney knocked him down. And it was cleared out to the blue line and over it. Gusev back to Vasilyev. And center ice now. Mikhailov, the captain of this Red Army team. Here he comes. 
Mikhailov at center comes up near the Ranger line and they bump him on the boards and it's clear they hold it on the boards for a faceoff. Coming up during our first intermission, uh, look at the Russian Major League of Hockey, the league which the Central Red Army team is almost perennial champions. Dave Reynolds is going to chat with Phil Esposito and Dave Hodge and Howie Meeker will have an analysis of this first period of play and a special videotape look at the goaltending style of Tretyak. All that coming up during our first intermission. Red Army with Vashislav Solonukin at center ice. Small Sev on the right side, Popov on the left wing. And it's Volchenkov and Kuzkin on the defense. The Rangers with Esposito and Vickers. Seven seconds left in Breshner's penalty. Garrett slaps at it. It goes as far as the line. Kept in by Kuzkin in front was Beverly. And he cleared it to center. Now the Ranger penalty is over. They're at full strength. This is Malsev coming in. He was stopped. Coming back. Pop off near his own line. Up to center eyes. They come back to regroup like this. And it's Malsev playing it back. He gets the relay. Nearly lost it to Esposito. But they move it to center. Malsev coming in. He stops it. The pass is stopped by Esposito. Esposito at center ice. In with Vickers along the left wing. Vickers cutting for the corner. He couldn't center it. Over speeding it back on the goal, and Malsev cleared it. This is Malsev coming over the line to center ice. Malsev down the right side. He gets in the slot to Saladukin. And Davidson kicking out of that one with Breshner, bringing it back for the Rangers. This is Gilbert coming down with Esposito and Vickers. Vickers on the left wing. He got away from Kuskin in the corner. Took a check. Solodukin covering up for the Red Army. Solodukin in front of his own net. And it's cleared by Volchenko. Into the corner. And they rough it up a bit before the pass comes to Malsev. He's built it by Jarrett. And it comes to the center ice area. Bringing it back. Pump off. Pump off. Stick handling around. Fell down. Widowar Red Army leading. Esposito took the swing at Pump off. In retaliation. Stick swinging mule. Vladimir Popov putting the stick up at Esposito. He goes right on. The Rangers down by a goal. Set up Vickers. He takes the shot. And that stopped by Tetjak as he fell quickly and made the stick save. Now Harlamov coming out. He's going down the left side at center in with Petrov. Harlamov trying to go all the way. And the Rangers break it up and come right back. This is Badney at center in with Vickers. Vickers along the boards. His pass to Gilbert. He fell. It's a three-man break. One man is back. And Rob coming down. The pass to Harlamov. Back in front. And Davidson went down. But the big save was by Beverly, the only defenseman back. Great play by Beverly and the Rangers. Brother, that looked dangerous. Three on one. Now back in the center ice area. Gusev turning around. The pass to Petrov coming in again. Petrov shoots. And Davidson stopped at the rebound. Was rifled wide by Mikhailov. They get it out over the line to center ice. The Russians in control, though, at this stage. They're leading 2-1. to one. Now back for it is Vasilya. Back of the net for Gusev. He was belted in there by Jerry Holland. Now Holland down the boards, checking on another one. It's cleared over where Harlamov has to go back for it. Harlamov tipped it back in his own zone. Big Gusev coming out. The long pass going down the ice. It'll be icing with Jarrett going back. Game one of Super Series 76 is coming to you from Madison Square Garden. It's when they insist I go jogging, and I do, and they give the advice that I realize how the years have flown and how important it is to have the right life insurance for each time in our lives, for their education, for family security. Life insurance is the most unselfish thing you can buy. The Mutual Life of Canada. Here's Al Arbor, coach of the New York Islanders, in attendance here tonight. His team will be playing the other Soviet club, the Wings, later on during this series of eight games. Now the Rangers with the draw. It's flipped in front by Holland. He could get a shot away. Dylan went in after it, but Luchenko beat him to it. Now Dylan stole it. Oh! And Tretyak, lightning-like fashion, kicked out the leg and made the same. Dylan keeping it in with Holland. 
but not for long. Coming out, Slukov to center ice. Up with Mikulov carrying in. He played it back to the line. It's kept in by Slukov, and his pass went by Alexandrov to the other wing. Rangers bringing it out with Fairbairn being stopped in center ice. Coming back, Alexandrov and Mikulov up over the line. Alexandrov going right in, and he centered it, making that extra pass for the Rangers covered up. Two to one, Red Army with 4 10 remaining in the first period. Next goal high, Slukov took a bump along the boards. Now the play is called the offside of the Ranger line. We have 4 3 remaining in the first period. Harry Sinden, anything surprises you so far? No, except that they can maintain that pace of theirs, particularly on offense. Once they get moving towards the Ranger end, they, they seem to pick up, and by the time they hit the Ranger blue line, they're flying. Uh, the Rangers, I thought, very, very effective killing that last penalty by lining up across their own blue line. The, the Soviets will never shoot the puck in. Now the Rangers with Beverly, who made that big defensive play a minute or so ago, on a three-on-one break by Red Army. Now the ice it goes. No icing on this one. It's waved off by John D'Amico. Luke's Kent was belted on the boards and couldn't clear it. But here they come with Popov up near the line. Stop by Batnay, who turns. Batnay for the Rangers, shooting a long one in wide of the goal. Kutniak slaps at it with a stick into the corner. It's grabbed quickly by Greg Paul. It's right in front. Here's the loose puck in front of the net, and John Stone was all alone and couldn't find it. Now the play comes out to Malsev. He's up near the line. Back to Popov, and they're offside at the Ranger line. From New York, Super Series 76. In the beginning, the car is a primitive device. Yet Imperial Oil is already producing a quality gasoline. Later, cars become elegant and sophisticated. Imperial patents an additive to keep engines cleaner. Today's world means smaller cars and special lead-free gasolines like SO2000 unleaded. SO Research, working to keep you moving. Face off coming up just outside the Ranger blue line. Red Army changing again. Esposito is now centering Polis and Johnstone. Red Army with Petrov, Arlamov, and Mikhailov. That's the number one line in probably all of the Soviet Union. Now coming out slowly, Batney's pass down across the line goes Johnstone. He couldn't get a shot though. Polis keeping it in. Polis sliced it in front and covering up was Mikhailov. Mikhailov back to his own net. Lusev's pass comes out to the line. Harlamov coming down. Harlamov up over the line. Dropped it over in front and again the Rangers break it up. With Batney's neat pass over on the wing for Johnstone coming in. Johnstone passed it back in front. Esposito got in and couldn't see it. And now Beverly took a shot. Right in front of Esposito. And Petyak was covering on the angle. Esposito wrapped at it and hit him with it. Now the center ice area of the Rangers. With some offensive power now, they get up as far as the line. Esposito brings it in. Esposito, who is the, one of the big stars of the 72 series, keeping it in. Now, finally, bringing it out, Mikhailov to center ice on a break. Harlamov dropping it over. And the Rangers get back, but can't clear it. Gusev shoots, and his high drive went off the glass. Here, the blue line, it's kept in by... Back of the goal, Beverly got away from Mikhailov. And it's Beverly's pass up to Middleton, who comes to center, in with Polis. Polis is offside at the Red Army line. Back in 1972, Phil Esposito led everybody in that series with 52 shots on goal. And he's had two or three cracks at Tretiak tonight. And this was the one that he had, and the puck came through from Beverly, and he let it go. He just whacked at it. Tretiak hanging on on the short side and made the save and then cleared the rebound. In the center ice area, Jarrett over for Greshner. The Rangers, they shoot it in. Zagonkov takes it for Red Army. A long pass comes to center. Alexandrov trying to break in. He's across the line. Alexandrov, the quick little hockey player, got it in front. Slukov couldn't shoot it, and Davidson covering near the side of the net makes the save. And we get another Ranger penalty, which makes it four for four against New York, and the fans reacting. Uh, the call by the Soviet official Yuri Karandin, and it is Ron Greshner. He draws his third straight penalty. Jarrett got the first.
first one. It was while he was off that Alexandrov scored. And here's Greshner off here for holding. Interesting here, Dick, to see if the Soviets try anything different on their power play. They had a very, very poor power play the last time out, trying to make many plays at the Ranger blue line. None of them successfully. Maybe they will shoot it in. There is Victor Shluktov, who's at center. On this power play, Davidson has to stop it right off the draw. That big falling. Tries to get another whistle and comes loose. It's kept in back to the line. Lutenko took a shot. That was blocked by Davidson, and he is probably going to be busy. Carol Vadney fell there, but Harry, I think Carol's had a pretty good first period so far. Very good. He looks the strongest uh, Ranger defense is playing very well. I noticed the Soviet player used his feet effectively there to free that puck after Carroll fell on it. Shukov with Vikulov and Alexandrov. It went by everybody down the ice. With the Rangers carrying it. One minute, 25 seconds remaining in the period. And a minute, 35 of the penalty. And at center, Vikulov wheels his way up over the line. Stick handling deeply. Vikulov is bumped on the boards. The Rangers, Kachuk, shooting it down the ice. Coming back, Vladimir Luchenko, back to the net. One minute remaining in the opening period. Two to one the score, Red Army leading. They're on a power play now. Up to center ice. Vikulov coming up over the line, trying to stick handle through. And again, the Rangers breaking it up and clearing it for that day. 45 seconds remaining in the period. This is Petrov. Over the line, he's at center. Petrov with some difficulty controlling it. He has to wait for Harlamov to come out and Kachuk stole it. Kachuk for the Rangers. 33 seconds remaining in the period. Kachuk loses it at center. And Petrov coming back in his own zone with Vasilya. The pass to Harlamov at center. Harlamov coming up near the line. Breaks through all the balls. Scores! A beautiful goal by Valerie Harlamov. Yeah, shades of game one in 72. You just, play here. you just won't see a better move through the middle of two defensemen than this one coming up right here. Fakes left, right, oh. slides it left again and through the middle with his quickness. And, and finishes it out with a high shot to the glove side. Beautiful. Well, just a tremendous goal. That makes it three to one. Their second power play goal as Lamont splits the defense in the truest sense of the word. Oh. Well, he has become one of the big stars, Valerie Harlamov. And just about every international series, certainly in the 72 series, repeating in 74, and I guess again tonight, that was a super move. In Super Series 76, game one, three to one, with four seconds remaining in the first period. The Rangers in control at center as the buzzer goes to score. Red Army three, and the Rangers one. Harry, another look at that move by Harlamov. Great individual effort, and up until that point, the Rangers are very effective line up, lining up along their blue line. He has a quickness stick to, once he puts a shift or two on somebody, he can accelerate after the shift is over and leave the player behind, and he did that perfectly on that goal. So it's 3-1 to one for the Central Red Army. Shots on goal, they outshot the Rangers 12-10 to 10 in the first period, live from New York, Super Series 76. George. Good evening, Tom. You know, in times like these, I'm glad my securities are handled by a really good investment firm. Oh, who's that? Pitfield. Pitfield Mackay Ross did a portfolio review for me a while back. From that time on, we've worked together. That good, eh? Very professional and a really broad range of services. But you know, what impressed me most was the quality of their people. George, I couldn't have been looked after better if if my account had been as big as yours. <laughs> You know, I'm sure I made the right move. I think you did, Tom. Pitfield Mackay Ross have been my financial advisor and my companies, too, for 20 years. And they still are. Because in times like these, you need the best people around you you can find. Pitfield Mackay Ross, 40 offices in Canada and abroad. Choosing us could be our most important investment decision. I should have had the car checked before we left. What do we do? Well, there's a farmhouse. I use the phone. See if the car breakdowns can be inconvenient. 
and costly. But regular preventative maintenance at your ESSO retailers can save you money by preventing problems before they start. I think you'll be okay now. Have a good trip. At ESSO, we are working to keep you moving. Vickers opened the scoring for the Rangers at 21 seconds, bringing back memories of Montreal in 1972, but then penalties hurt the Rangers and Alexandrov, Vikulov, and what a move by Harlamov for the third Soviet goal. Four penalties for New York, and the Soviets scored on two of them. We reach back into the archives now for a look at the Russian Major Leagues, the Soviet version of the National Hockey League. This film was done by the late Jack Dennett, and it serves as a position from which we can see the Central Red Army. This game was the forerunner of hockey in the Soviet Union. It's called bandy. It's played on a frozen soccer field with 11 men on a side, using shorter sticks and a ball instead of a puck. In fact, it wasn't until 1946 that the USSR first experimented with hockey. Bandy is merely a winterized version of soccer. Hence, we see the roots of Soviet hockey stretch back to soccer football. Today, this is the focal point of hockey at the USSR, the Sports Palace in the Lenin Sports Complex, where both Team Canada series were played and where the four major clubs whose players comprise the national team play the majority of their games. Thus, the top hockey in the USSR is very centralized. The four big clubs we refer to all play in Moscow, Central Red Army, the Soviet Wings, Spartak, and Dynamo. We're watching Central Red Army play Dynamo. And for the record, the other six teams in the first division are Torpedo from Gorky, Dynamo from Riga, Kimmich from Voskresensk, Tractor from Chelyabinsk, Army from Leningrad, and Crystal from Saratov. Now, all these teams are truly clubs and not just hockey clubs. Because in the USSR, the labor unions sponsor recreational clubs with wide sport interests. This is the Dynamo Club in Moscow, financially backed by the labor union of the police. Central Red Army is naturally sponsored by the army. Soviet wings by the aviation industry. Spartak by the engineers. Torpedo by the automobile industry, Kimmich by the chemical industry, and so forth. Soviet boys get involved in these recreational clubs at very young ages, taking up one sport or another. Thus, each of the major hockey teams has an extensive in-club farm system. These are 12-year-old Spartak and Dynamo boys, hoping someday to get to the sports palace on the big team. This action is from last year when Army played Dynamo. Anatoly Tarasov, generally regarded as the architect of Soviet hockey, was Army's coach up until this season. Now it's Konstantin Loptev. The Central Red Army Club boasts such players as Vladislav Trechak, Alexander Gusev, Boris Mihailov, Vladimir Petrov. Alexander Gusev, Boris Mihailov, Vladimir Petrov, and the dynamic Valerie Harlamov. The Soviet wings are coached by Boris Kolygin, with players such as Vyacheslav Anisin, Sergei Kapustin, and Yuri Lebedev. Dynamo's coach is Arkady Chernyshev, who's probably been equally as important as Tarasov in the development of Soviet hockey. Alexander Maltsev and Valery Vasiliev are his two best-known players. And former international star Vyacheslav Starshinov coaches Spartak, a team that provides Vladimir Shadrin and Alexander Yakushev for the national team. Each team plays 36 games in the regular schedule, but many players will play up to 100 games when you consider there are three breaks during the season, two of them for five weeks to accommodate tournament and exhibition play. There's also a second division league with 14 teams. And like soccer, the top second division team moves into the first division and the bottom first division team is relegated to the second division for the following season. But the cream is in Moscow and on the four big clubs, Central Army, Soviet Wings, Spartak, and Dynamo. 
And so when it comes time to group forces and field a national team, the Army Wing, Spartak, and Dynamo boys know each other pretty well. And with those built-in breaks in the schedule to accommodate national team practice and play, they certainly have an organizational leg up over us in Canada and the United States when it comes to icing a cohesive all-star club. Somewhere in the future, I think uh, we'll be able to know much better the names of those teams and the Russian major leagues. Next, Dave Reynolds talks with Phil Esposito as Super Series 76 continues in just a moment. There are cars that give you a lot of space at the expense of gasoline. And there are cars that give good gas mileage at the expense of space. Granada is designed to give a good balance between space and gas mileage and at a reasonable purchase price. Ford Granada, like the Model A in its time, is an example of how Ford is meeting the needs of today's car buyers. Want a coffee? Sure. You can take it to there. Mmm, good. Hey, it's decaffeinated. Brim, made to be decaffeinated from a specially developed blend of fine coffee beans to give you rich, hearty coffee flavor. Barbara, you make a great cup of coffee. Brim, flavor so good, you've got to read the label to know it's decaffeinated. Bill Esposito, Skating out on the ice tonight for the first time, what did it feel like compared to 72? Well, nothing could compare to 72. I don't care, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, if they had another series or whatever. As far as I'm concerned, nothing could compare to 72. It was a great feeling. It was strange. Uh, here it is in the middle of our hockey season. And uh, instead of facing Philadelphia or Boston or Atlanta, we're facing the Russian Army team. And uh, yeah, it was kind of strange, but Hey, look, it's, uh, it's a good game so far, I think. I think the fans are enjoying it. We've got to stop those stupid penalties. I think the guys are overzealous. I think I told them too much about what happened, what happened to us over in Russia. Have they changed at all in the three years? You can, how can you say? I, they still look the same to me. I mean, they just do their thing, and uh, they don't uh, do anything different than I ever saw them do before. Uh, I, I don't think they've changed, no. You say in the middle of the season, did you have trouble getting psyched up for this game? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did because of the, you know, we're in a tough battle with our division and to make a playoff spot. And we weren't thinking about uh, the Russians until after Christmas, which was the 26th, 27th. Talking about emotion, do you know that in Russia now, they are working with psychologists and psychiatrists to get their players to feel some emotion. They, they don't do it. That's one of the reasons why Team Canada won, because of the heart. What do you think of that? Well, they don't have to worry about us people in Canada and the United States. We're full of emotion. So if they want to have psychiatrists teach them emotion, that's their business. Uh, I don't need anybody to show me emotion. I, I have lots of emotion. Okay, Phil, and I hope it translates into some good scoring opportunities and some good goals. Thank you Thanks very much. Very much. Thank you. Phil Esposito, live from New York, Super Series 76. Hey there in those snowshoes, go with us. Bumping down an icy slide or climbing down a mountainside. Come on, everybody, grow with us. The Bank of Nova Scotia, with a special savings plan that'll work for you. Come on, everybody, grow with us. Grow with us, grow with us, grow with us. News. The 1976 Radio Shack catalog is hot off the press. Over 160 pages of top quality electronic products, cassette players and recorders, citizens band radios, antennas, and much more. Today's news is value, and that's what you'll find inside the new Radio Shack catalog. Behind this cover is a whole world of quality electronic equipment at prices that make it easy to afford. Pick up your new catalog at your Radio Shack store today and read all about it. How are you tell me you'd almost rather watch the Soviets practice than play, and you have some footage of Trechak practicing, warming up. Yes, and I think the one thing that's really outstanding in my mind is the way that they do warm up these fellows, particularly before the game. And here you'll see Trechak down and stretching the, the muscles during the early skating drills. I think it's common for most Canadians to do this. 
But in a moment, you'll see him in the corner. And you know, the key to playing good goal, to be a sensational goaltender, is balance. Not only balance on skates, but balance when you're down on your knees. Now watch this fellow as he shifts from knee to knee and how long he does it. But look at his shoulders. He's moving his head, but his shoulders are always squarely facing the puck. And hey, if you've played goal or ever had those pads on, you've got to be in great shape. See, his knee on the ice is always under him, and he's balanced, and this allows him to get back up. Now he goes into the net, and it's very interesting here. Watch how they rotate the puck. They only have three pucks, and here it's uh, shots to the left side, low and high. And watch, he'll catch him, drop it to a stick, and over to the goaltender, and the puck is continually going. All shots are on the left side. Now, here they are to the stick side, glove side, high and along the ice. Now, notice his stance. He's, his feet are slightly spread. Now, here he is uh, shooting pucks at him, and they're right at him between the legs, and he's dropping and closing his legs. Now, here he is. See the stance? These are from well out and from the blue line. And, gee, the Russians aren't shooting too well. They're, <laughs> they're missing the net completely. Now, this is a pregame warm-up, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. And just watch this. Screen shot. They practice screen shots. Now, here he is, look, up again and able to get the rebound. And watch this move Yakashev puts on Vasiliev. Look at this. Isn't that something? <laughs> and we'll see him in the not-too-distant future. Quite a hockey player. We come back now. Out of utter confusion, this is three-on-one. And again, you'll notice they always get the puck to the man in the slot, in the slot. We've seen it tonight, and you'll see it all through the series. They'll never shoot the puck at the net from a bad angle. If there's someone coming in, and their whole objective is, is to clear the slot. See that? Right into the middle. The puck never goes to the man on an angle. It goes to the man in the middle, and they're just, just so good at doing this. How you say uh, they use three pucks in, in uh, warm-ups? Uh, I have a feeling they had all three of them going at once in that first period. But as Phil Esposito said, and we have to agree, it was a pretty good first period of hockey with the Soviet Central Army leading the Rangers 3-1 to one live from Madison Square Garden in New York. This is Super Series 76. This winter, Pacific Western Airlines offers nine great Canadian ski adventures. High adventure in the Caribou, Kootenays, and Okanagan. We're Pacific Airlines, we're with you always. You can't tell revolutionary right from revolutionary wrong. And you can. Of course I can. You're much younger than I am. Sunday night, CBC's performance presents the story of a young anarchist. Sasha, I dedicate my life to anarchy. I am committed. You are romantic. J. Edgar Hoover called Emma Goldman the most dangerous woman in the world. As long Red as we... Emma on CBC's performance Sunday night. How long we work for how much... That's next Sunday on CBC. teams are back on, ready to start the second period. And the Red Army leading the New York Rangers, 3-1. to one. Now there's Rick Middleton of the Rangers, who is sporting quite a shiner in his right eye, picked up prior to tonight's game. We talk about this Central Red Army team as being traditionally the best of the major league over there. They have played 795 games in their lifetime, won 656, tied 50, lost just 89. That's an 857 percentage. And there is Petrov, who's the number one center on this team and on the national team, and who in the part of the Soviet season completed to this point in 34 games, scored 21 goals. Well, now let's see how the second period shapes up. A lot of excitement in the opening frame by the Rangers, penalized four times, and you can't continue to take penalties against this Soviet team and expect to come out on top. Gusev in his own zone. Back in front of the net. It's played back for Petrov. He got away from Esposito. Then he dropped it back. Mikhailov comes up to center. They'll go back again and get organized if it doesn't look that good to him up front. And they'll continue to control the 
puck, just like they're doing now. Mikhailov into Harlamov. Harlamov breaking for the net. Oh, and he just failed to get that shot away, being tied up by Vickers. Reschner for the Rangers. Coming out, slides it ahead. Jill Bear with Esposito on his left. Esposito with the pass. Esposito comes up over the line, dropping it back. Red Army intercepting, clearing it to center. Mikhailov coming in with Harlamov. Here's Harlamov on the wing. It went behind him. Harlamov centered it, and it went by everybody to center ice. But again, Mikhailov was back to Petrov. Petrov to Harlamov coming in. Harlamov a pass to Mikhailov, and his shot was blocked by Gilbert. Gilbert now coming out. He's at center. Gilbert with Esposito. He didn't anticipate that move and didn't see the pass. Petrov at center, a two-on-one break again. Mikhailov's pass to Harlamov into the corner. He tries to center it. Does he score? Petrov slapped it into the corner, and it's four to one. Doug Jarrett got caught up the ice on this one, and Harry, they're getting those breaks. Uh, you said they could not afford to let the Russians break away. Three-on-one, two-on-one. It happened again. Well, they kind of messed up the two-on-one, but it ended up in a goal anyway. They made a bad pass, uh, which is unusual. Finally got control of it again, and Karlamov with a beautiful pass to that goal to Petrov. Well, Petrov is let it go right as soon as he got it. So it's now 4-1. to one. This is Shluktov. Back near his own line, Alexandrov with a pass, passed it ahead. That day near his own line for the Rangers. Long pass up on the wing, Kachuk going in. Kachuk breaking for the net with Middleton, and he was stopped right in front. Demkowski has it in the corner. Demkowski near the blue line. He lost control of it, got it back again, and lost it a second time. Kachuk at center ice. Luchenko took it from him, and he's turning around in his own zone. Luchenko up the ice, the pass to the right side. Alexandrov is coming in, took his shot, got his home rebound, and then Bad Day took it. Bad Day coming down. A long pass to center, tipped by Kachuk. No icing on the plays. Gunkov slapped it on the corner boards, and it goes all the way back in over the Ranger line. Bad Day for New York. Four to one, Red Army leading. The play up near the blue line. Kachuk toss it off to an open wing. Middleton comes back. And then Luchenko missed it. At center ice, they bring it in again. It's Alexandrov cutting for the net. He's in behind the goal. Into the corner, still has it. Alexandrov lost it against Kachuk. And Kachuk out at center ice, caught by Alexandrov, but managed to make a play. Batney takes the pass and is in. Batney right in front, and Kachuk couldn't reach it. He slapped it in front of the goal, and Tretyak blocked it and held on. The goal by Petrov came at 126 to make it a 4-1 to one hockey game. Harlamov and Mikhailov hit on the assist, and Petrov just let it go. It caught the inside of the post on Davidson's stick side. A quick reaction on the part of the shooter, and of course that is so important, he made no mistake. They played 3-0-4 of the second period. A quick shot from the line is booted away. Alchenkov can move it out. Now it comes back near the Ranger line, and nobody was in position to pick it up. Reschner has to go back. Reschner being watched by Popov. Got away from Malsev. And the pass for Fairbairn didn't work. Picking it up, Volchenko at center ice into Popov. And the Rangers again with Breschner. His pass to Fairbairn. He was bumped by Volchenko. And again the Rangers. Breschner bringing it out. He's coming down with Dylan. And up over the line. It's played right in front. The backhand shot by Breschner was wide. Breschner again centered it. And Petyak goes down to make the save. It's kept in by Jarrett. Back of the net, Wayne Dillon went after it. And Petyak covered up. It's cleared back where Greshner again plays it ahead. And it's Dillon and Holland trying to move it in. Dillon was stopped, got it back. Into Holland, back to Dillon. Dillon back to Holland. Holland gets it. And the high drive was up against the glass. It's centered in the crease, and Petyak has to hang on. From New York, Super Series 76. I'm the masked lumberjack. Saturday afternoon, TV wrestling. 103 consecutive losses. This here is a new $3 Western. 
over two million bucks in prizes. Those two quarter millionaires, I'm gonna be one. After 103 losses, it's my turn. Who's gonna win? Win the West. The Rangers now coming up with some offensive drive, and there's Tretiak getting set for this face-off to his left. Bob, that goaltender's helmet he's wearing, made in Canada. Here's a quick shot, and that was stopped in front of the net. Harlamov brings it back out to center ice. He's going up over the line, trying to slip to the fence. He fell down as he tried to shoot it, and fanned on it. Now in front, a quick drive by Vasilya was up over the net. Back of the goal, that day being hounded by Mikhailov. And it's Harlamov trying to help out. Harlamov gets it back near the line, but the Rangers bring it out. A long pass down in the way, and Vickers was stopped by Gusev. Harlamov tipped it out to center ice, and here's Mikhailov speeding in. He's in with Harlamov. Mikhailov gets set to Harlamov. And Davidson watched that one dribble by the near post. The Rangers finally get it out to center ice. Four to one is the score. Red Army leading. Tipped in front of the net by Esposito. A high drive against the glass. Vickers in the corner, bumped by Vasilia. Vasilia bringing it out, looking ahead. The play comes to the left wing, and here's Alexandrov dropping it back. Mikhailov trying to set it up in front, and he was belted hard by Bednarski, who's on for the first time. Jill Bears pass, down to Vickers. He has to hurry to get by Vasilia, centered it. Esposito! Oh, and that was blocked in front. Army trying to move it out of their own zone. There it comes with Mikhailov to center ice and it's Alexandrov coming in. Alexandrov dropping it back. Gusev along the board. In for the Petrov. A bullet shot. Stopped by Davidson. It's cleared up by Johnstone. At center ice, Johnstone coming in. Overstates it. He was checked from behind. Mikhailov could move it out. Gusev into the corner. Red Army regrouping Alexandrov in his own zone, leaving it for Gusev. Gusev tipped it out front. Mikulov comes near the line, near the last he did. And spinning around was Polis. Polis could get a shot. It's clear Stemkowski didn't reach it. And Vikulov at center ice got away from Stemkowski and then Polis. And it's Vikulov bringing it in. Finally, he was bucked out of the play. And the Rangers clear it out. Here's Polis. One man back. He's going in. Dropping it along the blue line. And Alexandrov came back to pick it up. Four to one. Red Army leading. Polis tried to hit a man back at the net and missed him. Red Army, a long shot down the ice. Stopped by Davidson. Now Jarrett's pass up to center. Stempkowski is coming in. Big Stempkowski being muscled off on the boards by Vasilya. He centered it, but it was blocked in time. Now Jarrett near his own blue line for the Rangers. Jarrett waits. A pass on the wing goes to John Stone. Coming in is Stempkowski. Stempkowski's pass was blocked by Malsev. And back for Red Army. At center ice, it's in with Popov. He was stopped. It's centered right in front. And a shot went way wide of the net. Malsev not coming near the goal. Popov chasing Greshner behind the goal. Greshner cleared it, but not out. Red Army keeping it in. Now again, Popov is covered by Greshner. Greshner number four. Puts it on the board. Coming out, Johnstone. Johnstone with Polis going in with Stemkowski. But Stemkowski's got the kick and shot. Now that's blocked by Tretiak. Down the other side, John Stone. Tonight's game is coming to you from Madison Square Garden. Oh, you must be the new kid. Decident skincare lotion. I'm new, all right, but I'm no kid. I'm for adults like you. Well, I'm the number one hand lotion. Well, you are now, but I'm very rich. Not richer than I am. Mm-hmm. Fifty percent richer in the emollients that make dry adult skin soft as a baby's. Fifty percent richer? Yes, fifty percent richer. So I work harder than you do. Hmm. New Decident Skincare Lotion. The adult way to baby your skin. Vladimir Popov of the Central Red Army team has been penalized for charging at 7.58. As Bob mentioned, first penalty called against the Soviets. Popov.
Bob is a youngster who came over early and played with the Moscow Selects during their tour of Canada for the past couple of weeks. And there he is in the penalty box as assistant coach Alexandrov keeps notes. They've got three coaches, Harry, working back of the bench. <laughs> well, they have now three the or four different units, don't they? <laughs> now the Rangers on the power play. Esposito at center ice gets the draw. Here's Schilfer. Might pick one. Didn't get good one on it. It was wide anyway. And now on the boards. Into the corner, Vickers gets set, made it back to the in front, and it was intercepted by Petrov. Now the Russians will try to kill it. Mikhailov back into his own zone. Lachenko shoots it down the ice. Abadne's pass behind Gilbert. A two-on-one break. It's Vigdulov going with Petrov, sliding it in front, and it went by Mikhailov, who was in on the wing. Back of the net, Gilbert. 4-1 the score. Red Army leading. Rangers on the power play, led by Gilbert up to Middleton. Middleton is up into the middle, coming up against Gusev on the Red Army team. That will give the Rangers a two-man advantage. This is Super Series 76 from New York. Following information is very important if you're considering a new car. With more road salt being used than ever before, Ford Motor Company protects its cars against corrosion with processes like aluminized wax treatment for door interiors, sprayable vinyl sealers in critical areas, and rust-resistant zinc incremental or zinc-rich electro-coating. Combined with Ford's other steps, the 76 Fords and Mercury's are the most corrosion-resistant cars Ford has ever built. That's quality engineering. Ask your Ford or Mercury dealer for more details. Now a minute and 12 seconds worth of double advantage for the Rangers. Here's Gilbert working it into the slot. Gilbert nearly lost to Petrov covering on him. Now bad day to Esposito. He fanned on it. Esposito has it again, taking it off the boards. Esposito looks around. Over on the other side. Bad day shooting. with it. Vickers looks around, gives it to Gilbert. A two-man advantage for the Rangers now. They're down by three goals. It's Gilbert waiting. He tried to put it in front of Petrov, knocked it down and cleared it down the ice. Now it's Middleton coming out. Here's Middleton swooping in over that line. Here's Middleton. He was grabbed but carries on. He centered it. And it's Gilbert racing near the line. Over the other way for Batman. Esposito played it back of the net, covering up with Sikankov. Sikankov gets it loose. Up right in front of Batme. Esposito back to Gilbert. He can't reach it. Gilbert with center ice Syria. The Rangers on around. Can't get too many good shots away. Vickers in with Esposito. Back it comes. Now Kopov is back on. So they're one man short. It's clear to the line and not out. Batme coming in. Oh, and his pass went behind Vickers. Here's Vickers in the corner. remaining in the second period. The score, the Soviet Red Army 4, the New York Rangers 1. Gleaming, glistening, sparkling clean dishes, and more. That's what Sunlight Liquid promises. Because sunlight has the freshness of real, natural lemon. And in today's ever-changing world, sunlight is still sensibly priced. Clean dishes, natural lemon and sensible price. Only sunlight promises all three. This game is being televised back to the Soviet Union, and Bob, there's an old friend of yours doing the commentary from ice level. That's what they call him, Mr. Rosarov, from the ice level. He insists on sitting there. He wants to be near the action. Now, there's been some action in the stands. We have just had an altercation. The participants summarily ejected by the police. We've got something thrown on the ice, and Harry, give you a chance for 
Just a minute to talk about the Rangers and that two-man advantage. They had it for a minute and 12 seconds. I thought they moved it well. Trediak made a couple of good saves, particularly on Esposito on that quick shot from the slot. But I also thought the Russian team positioned themselves excellently. Uh, Petrov, who, who did such an outstanding job playing against Phil Esposito in the 72 series, even though Phil uh, led the, both teams, uh, was a key man on that two-man short situation. And twice he intercepted passes into the slot uh, to get them down the ice. And uh, the Russian team uh, really were not phased by all the passing of the puck around the Rangers were doing. And they were doing it quite well. I thought they may have deserved a goal. They made two or three good plays that should have resulted in a goal. Once in a while, with the teams at full strength that I'm referring to here, do I detect that the Soviets get a little, shall we say, careless inside their own blue line? I think they're quite vulnerable there, and I, I really don't think that we've taken enough advantage of it tonight, mainly because probably in the first period anyway, the Rangers were uh, shorthanded so often. But uh, the biggest weakness I think they have, Dick, is, is in their own end, and they're downright careless at times. And uh, if you're ready and uh, uh, anticipating these moves of theirs, you can take advantage of that carelessness. We, so far tonight, we've had a couple of sloppy passes by the Russians picked up by the Rangers, but unfortunately, uh, uh, we didn't capitalize. Coming up during the second intermission on our telecast, we're going to take a detailed film look at how the Russians play, the differences between their style and ours. A lot of them, of course, evident here tonight during this game. Dave Reynolds who chatted with Ken Dryden about playing goal against the Soviets, and Kenny's going to have a chance to do just that Wednesday night in Montreal, New Year's Eve. And Howie Meeker and Dave Hodge will be along with an analysis of the second period and the highlights. Things are held up as they clear whatever it was that was thrown on the ice, and maybe that's why the people were thrown out of the rink. Four to one is the score, with the Soviets having scored four straight goals. The only goal in this second period coming at the 126 mark Petrov scoring from Harlamov and Kailov, and that's the way it stands, four to one. Dick, I don't recall the, uh, the Soviet team using as many long passes to get out of their own end uh, as they have tonight. Uh, during the 72 series. I, I'm wondering whether or not they felt that that was uh, the best way to operate against uh, NHL teams who may persist on forechecking them very tightly. Is to leave one or two forwards up between the blue line and center ice. And sometimes they're actually over center ice. And when the pass is made, they skate back on their side of center ice and pick up the pass, much like a pass receiver coming back to get the ball. And it's working very effectively. Of course, you know, you have to have very strong defensemen, a very quick defenseman to throw a, that's about a 75, 80 foot pass, and it has to be accurate. But they worked it a half a dozen times, and I was very impressed with it. I think it is perhaps a uh, change in tactics for them. Harry, with Phil Esposito on the screen, I am going to let you off the hook. I'm not going to talk about the big trade, but while I have a chance with you on our coast-to-coast -coast, uh, telecast, uh, what about Bobby Orr? I have to ask you about Bobby's uh, situation and condition right now. Well, Dick, Bobby has been uh, just recuperating now uh, from the operation he had in November. Uh, he, as a matter of fact, he, I think it's today or tomorrow, he'll be arriving in Boston for his first checkup by Dr. Carter Rowe there since the operation, and uh, we'll know more when he starts to use it a little bit, when he gets to exercise it a little bit, and even he, even skate a little bit with it. Right now, he's just, he's healing. Well, I tell you, people talk about this particular series, the interest that there is, and so often you hear people say it's too bad that Bobby Orr once again loses out on the chance to play against the Soviets. Okay, Bob Cole. And the face-off with Sepkowski getting the draw back quickly, and the shot by Fairbairn was wide. Fairbairn after it again, tried to knock it along the boards. A high stick went up, but did not make contact. And center ice. The pass from the wing, Satcharak, on for his first shift. He has to face three Soviet players who are coming in now. The pass comes back to Vikulov from Shluktov. He couldn't make a play. Fairbairn at center ice had his pass stopped. Now again, Shluktov turning around, lost it. Fairbairn and Kachuk couldn't get it going. And bring it in again. Reschner up near the line. He shoots it in wide of the net. Luchenko went back in the corner for it. Stemkowski couldn't stop him. At center ice, Zacharak shoots it in, but Stemkowski was late in getting back outside the line. Well, there is number three. Vladimir Luchenko has played on six World Amateur Championship teams in the Soviet Union. 
Harry, they list them at 5'10", 200 pounds. They had more 5'6s, four 5'7s, and 5'8s on the statistics they've had over for the team. Is there anybody on that team that's 5'6"? I don't know. That's <laughs> a big hockey club, you know, to have half a dozen 5'6 and 7-inch players on it. <laughs> and Harry, they had Alexandrov down as 5'5". Five five. Take that. Might be the, might be the closest. Okay, the Rangers, Beverly behind the goal. Into the corner from Esposito, Beverly comes out. Made it on the wing, Badney, being helped by Beverly again. Now Badney has to back up. Badney's pass to Beverly, coming out with Polis, looking for the pass. And he gets it near the line, had a stick lifted in, and Metzak holds it with his glove and gets the stoppage. The big soft for the Red Army. Side. You know, this fellow Tretchak is just 23 years old. Harry, that, he was 20 quality copies in three and a half minutes at a cost of about three quarters of a cent each. No meterage costs, no extra charges. It also reproduces photographs and duplicates in color. Can your photocopying system match that? Call us. We're in the phone book. Solodukin at center ice for Red Army. Seven minutes remaining in the second period. Four to one the score. Soviet Army out front. And the play from Popov to the blue line. The Rangers breaking it up and Dylan is coming out to center. Yes, Fairbairn on his right. The pass the other way. And Johnstone, or rather Polis turn around. Now getting in front. The quick shot by Holland was stopped. Holland again. And Petjak with that glove out made a good save. Outside the line, Greshner is forced along the boards, brings it in. Greshner getting in front and losing it. Popov comes back to center with Malsev going in. The play is tipped away to center ice, and Malsev has to come back. Now Volchenkov, he tried to go through. He stopped at the line, and Bill Fairbairn of the Rangers goes back deep in his own zone. During the 14-minute mark of the second period, 4-1 to one Red Army. This is Fairbairn coming out, shoots it in for the Red Army zone. After it behind the goal, he tried to center it. Dillon around the net. Dillon centered it. It went through the crease, and Jerry Holland was tied up and couldn't get a stick near it. Hop off along the left wing boards, being tied up by Fairbairn, but shakes him loose. He centered it in front, and down goes Davidson to hold it. Those of you with us right at the top of the show may have noticed a bit of a mix-up in the introduction of the Soviet players. As is their custom, they pulled a last-minute sweater switch. 12 became 8, and 8 became 15, and that's where the confusion began. There's a curved stick, and I'm sure that uh, by our standards, it's a little too much. Here's a face-off to the right of Davidson. Cleared on the boards, went by Kachuk at the line. It's kept in by Shluktov into the corner. He centered it. Scramble. Down goes Davidson. They score. Davidson went down, but they knocked it in. Alexandrov and Shluktov fighting for possession in front. Harry, the Soviets hung tough, and the Rangers didn't take out the man. A great example of the strength they have in their arms and hands. Watch here as he, as he struggled very hard with his hands to hang, hang tough on one, two, three, four, five white sweaters in the picture when it's all over and just the one Soviet player. But he put it home for Alexandrov, his second goal of the game, and it's 5-1 for the Central Red Army. Shukhtov, Nikulov, and Alexandrov were all pounding away in front of the net. And Harry Simmons just pointed out in sheer strength. They got their fifth He's goal. Shukhtov coming in again with Nikulov. Nikulov, who scored the last goal, and comes back to the line, a long shot by Lutenko, stopped, and here's Middleton on the breakaway. Luce had tried to get back, shoots, and Petyak got his leg out and made the save. Zemkowski kept it in, Middleton again centered it, and Kachuk couldn't make a play, he was covered in front. That's center ice, Shuktov coming up, he's up near the line and over it. Shuktov, given a ride on the boards, Zemkowski couldn't pick it up. Nikulov in the corner, tries to center it and fails. Middleton for the Rangers. A pass hit escape. And Kachuk is bumped by Badney and fell down. That is called. It was gloved ahead and a legal pass, and it's called back. Nikulov gets credit for that goal that makes it 5-1. to one. Harry, we're going to take another look at it from a different angle. I think it's just sheer strength and per perseverance on the part of the Soviet player. Watch, watch him strengthen his arms to get that little shot away. And again, 
We do a lot of weight training over there, and uh, might have something to do with that coach. Now the Rangers, Esposito starting out with just 425 remaining in the period. Five to one the score. Red Army leading. Petriak dropped it for Gusev behind the goal. Into the corner goes Vasiliev, and here he comes. Vasiliev up to center on the left wing, playing it in to Mikulov. He centered it. Petrov sliced it near the net. Harlamov puts it back of the goal. Petrov is stopped by Breshner. They hold it on the boards. It comes loose. Back to the line. A quick shot by Gusev was stopped by Gilbert. And Gilbert, in turn, was stopped by Vasiliev. Esposito. His pass tipped up at center by Jarrett. Gilbert going in. The pass to Vickers right in. He tried to play it back in front with an extra pass, and it was blocked. Breshner at center. Breshner stick handling neatly, losing it. And Red Army coming back down the ice on the left wing. Mikhailov tipped it back to the line. Here's Gustav right in. Oh! And Davidson was out of the play, but they couldn't jam it by him. Five to one, Red Army. And it's the Rangers going with Vickers. He was bumped out of the play. A nice, neat hip check by Vasilia. Now coming out is Mikhailov to center and pass it to Herlamov. He stopped to Mikhailov. He scored. Mikhailov. Now well, that makes it six to one. The Rangers actually playing short right there because Steve Vickers had been hurt and was limping off the ice at the other end of the rink. And Harry, they just toss it around again with all that room. Beautiful winger wide open, almost a three on two here. Across the goal mouth. Team captain Mikhailov uh, who gets the goal and that makes it six to one and the fans for the first time tonight seem to be getting just a little bit restless and upset with the Rangers and back they come right off the face off as Soviets in the New York zone again. Dolodukin, Boston in the Rangers zone. Now that nice pass to center. Fair bear to stop. Once again, Volchenkov with his at his own blue line. His pass stopped by Beverly. Up to Dillon. Dillon going in for the Rangers. A pass on the wing, and Holland centered it. At the line, Fairbairn took a long shot, and Tretjak making no mistake, loving it and holding it. From New York, Super Series 76. Give up Maxwell House Instant Coffee. Only for a week. Try to get by with a bargain brand. My week without Maxwell House coffee was really like going a week without a cup of coffee. The aroma and the full body taste and the satisfaction that comes along with a cup of Maxwell House coffee. Give up Maxwell House? Maybe if I was on a desert island or something I would. Maxwell House really is too good to give up. Harry, I'm sure that Canadian hockey fans are once again admiring the way the Soviets throw that puck around. Well, here we are. I think the Rangers are a little disorganized on defense, and disorganization against the Soviet team is fatal. They take advantage of a man caught out of position, and that's what they did there. Nobody's watching the right winger. Six to one is the score. A high shot off the glass, and after it is Holland. Gary Holland on the board, centered it. That army can't clear it out. Fairbairn kept it in, but now they'll move it out with Popov coming up to center ice. Vladimir Popov all the way with it, gets in front, and was stopped by Beverly. It's centered all the way to the red line, and coming back is Solodukin. The zone zone with Volchenkov shooting it down the ice. comes out a rather bad day to center. He shoots a long one in, stopped by Petjak, and he'll hold it every opportunity he finds now. Just to get the last two goals straightened out again, Vikulov from Zhukov and Alexandrov at 14-21, and then it was Mikhailov and a beautiful passing play. Arlamov and Gusov assisting at 16-54. On the right in behind is assistant coach Anatoly Firzov, who for years was considered the outstanding player of all in the Soviet Union. 34, Harry. They tried to talk about retirement a few times, even in this part of the world. <laughs> we got 10 years to go. <laughs> Shuktov coming out for Red Army up to center with 145 remaining in the second period. Davidson tipped it back in the net. Rangers trying to organize their own zone, and it's Gresher. He's been carrying the puck a lot. Plays it down to the wing for John Stone. He put a long high shot on the glass. Polis has the rebound, and he fell. Zagankov tried to move it out, but Polis gets 
Gets into the corner. Was checked by Sagankov. Now they fight for it. And Polis still fighting against Sagankov. The play is called. And it's going to be a face-off in the Red Army zone. There's an official game film being taken of this game. And it will be dispatched first off to Montreal. And Scotty Bowman and the Canadians will be looking at it as they prepare for their Wednesday night game. The Canadians are in Washington tomorrow. But they'll study the films on Tuesday. And then it'll go on to the other teams, including Harry or Boston Bruins, as this particular Central Red Army team makes a swing. Now coming out to the right of Trutjak, deep in the Red Army zone, with 116 remaining in the period. Right in front of Esposito. And his big shot. He didn't get it away properly. He's cleared away easily by Trutjak. Rangers keep it in, but they hold it on the board. to himself. Mentioning the Canadians, that game Wednesday night will be carried, of course, on Hockey Night in Canada. New Year's Eve from Montreal, and you'll be able to cut the tension with a knife in the forum, I'm sure. 7 o'clock Eastern time to start. The Wings, the other Soviet team on this trip, get into action tomorrow night in Pittsburgh. That game is not televised. Alexandrov tipped it out of his own zone. Vikulov is stopped, but carrying on is Chukov. Chukov coming up with Alexandrov around the net. And Alexandrov nearly broke in. He's a real speedster, too. On the boards, it's near to center. Now, play is called with Vikulov, I think it is, being draped along the boards. And I think it's a penalty to the Ranger rookie, number 14, Ed Johnstone. Here it comes. Johnstone uh, up from Providence. He's a native of Brandon, and with the Rangers having a lot of injuries, he's been in action of late. He gets a slashing penalty. Dick Phil Esposito been playing on two lines here tonight, right through this second period. Whether they're four or five goals down or not, he's still been seeing double duty with uh, with Vickers and Joe Bear on one line. Polis on the line that just went off. Okay, Harry, 49 seconds remaining in the period. This penalty at 19-11. And the score is 6-1. to one. Red Army. And the man advantage again. Watch him line it up now. Petrov is at center. His pass to Mikhailov. They're over the line. Mikhailov played it in, but it's stopped by Kajuk. And it went over the boards near the Soviet bench. I mentioned about Steve Vickers being injured. Here's a fellow who gave him the hip check. Valery Vasilyov, he's one of the two players loaned to this team from the Moscow Dynamos, voted the best defenseman at the 1975 World Amateur Championship. He's 26 years old. So many goals that they start deep in your own end, and, and his check started the play that uh, resulted in the goal for the Soviet team. Rangers, that day, shoots it down the ice. 30 seconds remaining in the second period. 6-1, to one, Red Army. And they're organizing near center. They go back in their own zone, but the Rangers are offside as they shoot it in. Now just 21 seconds remaining in the period. And Johnstone, the Rangers, has 132 remaining in his penalty. They saw up just outside, Red Army line. The juke comes to center ice. Didn't get the draw, but at center, a long shot by Fairbairn as he picked it up and stopped by Tretiak. Gusev around the net. He's a good rushing defenseman, comes up near the line. Gusev decides he doesn't like the way things look, passes it back to the gold man, Tretiak. And now Gusev coming out. Got away from one check as the buzzer goes to end the second period. Red Army six. And the Rangers won. And quite a difference in the tone uh, in the crowd here. The capacity crowd of 17,500. They were so high and so much behind their team when this game began. The Rangers opened the scoring at the 21-second mark of the first period and a goal by Vickers. Since then, the Central Red Army team has scored six in a row. It's the end of two periods now. Six to one. Central Red Army leading the New York Rangers. Live from New York, Super Series 76. There's just one place for me near you. It's like heaven to be near you. Times when we're apart, I can't face my heart. Say you'll never stray more than just a call away. If my hours could be spent. Can't get
get together, you can still get the feeling, the long distance feeling. The seventh draw will be held January 25th. An Olympic lottery ticket is a gift that offers millions of ways to wish everyone happy holidays. Ways like three prizes of $1 million each, almost $28 and one half million million total prize money. Special holiday gift envelopes are available. You can do your shopping and your gift wrapping at the same time in the same place. Buy your tickets today. Win a million cash tax-free. Think how great your new year would be. They just keep rolling, six to one now. Vladimir Petrov, then Vladimir Vikulov with his second of the game, and Boris Mikhailov made it six to one for the Central Red Army. Howie, we are so in awe of the Russians in the attacking zone that we forget they've only had one goal scored against them, and they're doing some things right in the defensive zone. We want to show excerpts from Al Stewart's award-winning film taken of the 74 Team Canada Soviet Series, and this deals specifically with defensive hockey by the Soviets. What do we look for? Well, I still suspect them in their own zone, but watch what they do through center ice and how they play defense up in the other team zone. And this is what Philadelphia does so well. Okay, it is shown very well in uh, Al Stewart's film taken, remember, in 1974 when Team Canada met the Soviet Union. And we'll go to that right now. Now let's look at some things which our cameras reveal about the Soviets' forechecking and the defensive strategy in general. They basically employ what they call their 2-1-2 two, two system when forechecking. The wingers usually both go for the puck carrier. The center waits out in a deep slot position, ready to react to the play and in a potentially good scoring position should his wingers get the puck. The defensemen play a very interesting and key role because they will penetrate deeply into the Canadian end to attempt to check the play should it start to come out on their side. And when this happens, notice that the centerman's job is to fall back to cover up for the defenseman. Now this happens occasionally in Canadian hockey too, but in Soviet hockey, it happens with almost programmed regularity. Canadian coaches don't want their defensemen getting trapped up ice, leaving the opposition with a three on two or a two on one. In traditional Canadian play, when two men go into forecheck, it's usually the two closest to the puck, with the third man hanging back, just the same as the Soviet center does. But then, when the play comes out on one side or the other, this forward goes to check, not the defenseman, as in Soviet play. Now here's an example in game two in Toronto, where the Soviet system breaks down, and it results in a Team Canada goal. The problem here occurs when the centerman forgets to cover for the checking defenseman. Johnny McKenzie tips the puck past, and it's Andre Lacroix and Bobby Hull, two on one for a goal. In the center zone, the Soviet centerman frequently turns around and skates backwards, the same as a defenseman, and plays at the head of a defensive triangle. The strategy is to angle the play toward either boards. And frequently it ends up that a defenseman and the center make the blue line stand instead of the two defensemen as in Canadian play. And the Soviet defenseman who's away from the play cuts in behind the blue line to act as a safety ready to retrieve the puck should it be shot in. The Soviets are very proficient at using the boards much as a boxer uses the ropes to cut down the ring and corner his opponent. Soviet players will angle the puck carrier into the boards and out of the skating room. This angling into the boards is usually done quite carefully, making absolutely certain that the man is squeezed out. The Russians are seldom interested in plastering a man into the boards, as so often happens in Canadian hockey. The hard-hitting tactic of the Canadian style has the advantage of being physically punishing, but it's also dangerous. Bad timing, and you can miss your check, and or the puck altogether. The Soviet system is not as intimidating, but it certainly can be frustrating. One other point about Soviet checking, seldom do they retreat to take a stand at the blue line, giving the other team center ice. The Soviets, to steal a basketball term, have a full court press on at all times. Witness Gordy Howe being badgered by three men here in center ice. The Soviets on defense, offensively, 
They have been awesome this evening. Next, a videotaped interview. Dave Reynolds with Ken Dryden, done a few days ago. Super Series 76 continues in just a moment. Thrifty's is everybody's thing. I hope everything goes okay. This new set of Levi's ought to knock them out. I hope she likes me. She should really dig this new outfit I got at Thrifty's. Levi's always makes a girl look great. When you look great, you feel great. Here goes. This is it. Just the difference between Wilkinson sword bonded and its imitators. This is one difference, the smoothest loading. But it's not the essential difference. This is the Wilkinson Edge, the superb cutting edge perfected by generations of Wilkinson craftsmanship in steel. You can't buy that from anyone else except Wilkinson Sword Bonded. Ken, the Russians, what do you expect from them this time? Well, I'm not really sure, Dave. I, uh, um, like a lot of people, uh, I haven't really seen them very much lately. Um, the last time I really saw them was four years ago. Um, I caught a couple of games on TV in, in 1974 to get something of an idea. But uh, I don't know that we're, we're that much better off. I think we're better off in the, in, as far as knowing uh, the Soviet team is concerned. We're better off just in the sense that there are not going to be any major surprises like, like there were in, in 1972. Um, we know that they're a very good team. We know some of the things that they do well. Um, given those things, they're going to be plays in a game that are going to be slightly unexpected, but at least not astonishing. And uh, so long as that's the case, uh, good teams should be able to adjust, and, and uh, we expect to be able to adjust. Who are the shooters? Same bunch, Kralamov, Mikhailov? Well, I would expect so. I, uh, I haven't seen their final roster list, but uh, uh, those players are still around. And uh, from what I understand, uh, the Army team is, is uh, uh, largely, um, the personnel is the same as, as the national teams, uh, with a few exceptions of the, some of the Wings players. So I would expect that uh, the best offensive line would be the Harlamov, Petrov, and, and Mikhailov. What about those curved sticks? Well, that's something that, that I've just read in the paper, and uh, if it's true, that would seem to suggest that the Soviet team is, is more and more interested in in shooting, uh, that uh, up until 1972, uh, there was a very strong feeling that the Soviet team would not shoot beyond 20 or 25 feet. They would work it in. Their shots were not very good. In 72, uh, I think that we, uh, we came to the realization that they didn't shoot that badly. No. And uh, I would expect that they probably shoot a lot better. Now, what that does uh, to, the, to their passing game, I don't know. It has to hurt it in some senses, but I would expect it can't hurt it too much or they wouldn't have gone to as dramatic hooks as we've uh, been reading about. Have they improved, do you think, in the four years? I'm sure they have. You know, I, I don't know how much or necessarily in what ways, but uh, I'm sure they have. Uh, um, the experience of, of playing against very good teams with Team Canada 72 and Team Canada 74 um, has to have uh, helped their game. Um, I know from, from talking to some Soviet officials the summer after the Team Canada 72 series that they were uh, most amazed at, at the play of Canadian teams in front of both nets, offensive net and defensive net. I would expect that they would be a lot better defensively and offensively in that area. Uh, so areas where, where they saw that we were particularly good, I would expect that they would be moving in those directions. Okay. Good luck in your game. Man, it's worked Thank out you, well, better than some of the others. Yeah. Now back to Dave Hodge. And just a little more pressure goes on Mr. Dryden's shoulders by what we have seen here tonight. Everybody expects the best test of all to be New Year's Eve at the Montreal Forum when the Army meets the Canadians. Howie Meeker will have highlights as we return to Super Series 76 in just a moment. Right from the start, cats crave certain foods. Instinctively, the high-protein foods. All cats have it. Your cat. Purina Dairy Dinner. 
and Purina Cat Chow. The high protein cat foods satisfy your cat's protein instinct. With Purina, the high protein cat foods. TV Records presents Tom Jones. I have nothing. The music, the energy, the feeling of Tom Jones are yours. I have no one. What's new? What's the Tom Jones 10th Anniversary Album. Two records, $7.99. Two 8-track tapes, $10.99. On TV Records. Available at participating outlets. Well, Howie, uh, picking highlights out of the first two periods, I think you could just uh, grab some videotape of a couple of minutes and let it roll, but I, I wonder what you picked for it. Well, it's, it's their puck control and how they just won't give you the puck until they're ready to give it to you, or they won't make a play until they force to make the play. Now, look at here. This is right off the start of the second period, and already they've had control of the puck in this manner for some 10 or 12 seconds. Now they circle and circle and circle, and what happens is that the range of defense start coming up. The wings get out of position and out of position, and they get chasing the puck. Now C-17, the pass will now go to him, and he, uh, uh, Harmanoff. The pass goes from there to Harmanoff, and Harmanoff went in and had a heck of a shot because you caught everybody standing still. They skate, they skate, skate, and circle, and they do the puck, and all of a sudden, whoosh, and you're in trouble. You said that they're beating uh, the Rangers one-on-one, -on -one, not just with passing. And, uh, of course, Halamov is a perfect example of that, but more than just him. They're all putting great moves on the Rangers. You know, the first picture you had of the Russians when you're talking to hockey people, yeah, but they can only beat you with the passes. They're automatics. They're machines. Oh, they jump at your house. <laughs> they're human machines. They go up there. They remind me of Max Bentley. They give, they've turned a dozen Rangers inside out by giving them this and giving them that and going the other way. They're just beautiful to watch. Hey, I can't wait till Wednesday night. That's going to be some game in Montreal. Here, this is a man short. Now, here's discipline. Now, watch the man furthest from the puck, Petrov. The puck goes into the corner. Now, let's stop it right here. Look at he. See how he moves in to take the center away from Esposito. Esposito's had a fantastic night, but the man furthest from the, the play or furthest from the puck, the top of the box, he goes in and takes Esposito. Okay, let her go from here. Now watch, they'll still try to give the puck to Espo. And look at, look at Mihailov staying right with him, right with him. He gets the puck and out it comes. It'll, actually, that ended up, I think, in a, a good two-on-one break for the Russians. But their dedication, their, I don't know, duty. They, they, they have a duty to do, and they do it time and time again on offense and on defense. Thank you very much, Holly. Live from Madison Square Garden, New York, Super Series 76. If you want solid mileage improved value at an affordable price. The cat, the cat's where it's at. Mercury Meteor Rito 500, more fuel efficient with a 351 V8 engine standard. Power front disc brakes, select shift automatic transmission, power steering, all standard. Stylish, comfortable interior with room for six. And you can choose a Meteor that runs on regular gasoline. The cat, the cat's where it's at. See all the new mileage improved 76s. Wow. At your Mercury dealer today. No matter what you're saving for, come on and save with us. Whatever goals you have in store, you'll reach them soon with us. Because we have a savings plan to turn your money into more. Come on, everybody, grow with us. For short, medium, or long-term savings, watch your money grow at the Bank of Nova Scotia. Come on, everybody, grow with us. The New York Rangers are not having too much fun tonight. They trail the Soviet Red Army team 6-1 to one after two periods. Harry Sinden with us in the broadcast booth. And Harry, I love trying to make it sound like an alibi for your league, the NHL. You do have a theory that it's tougher for an NHL team in a situation like this than it is for the Soviets. Well, it's a one-game shot for us, and uh, the pressure is on us to win. We, you know, we're supposed to win. Uh, and there's a big strangeness about playing against the Russians for the first time. In fairness to the Rangers, very, very few of their players have done so. We found this in 72, obviously. Oh, we got bombed 7-3 in Montreal. Now, I think you could say that, you know, the strangeness, the unusualness of the Russian team had something to do with it. Okay, Harry, we're just about set to start the third period of play here tonight in Madison Square Garden for the play-by-play. -play. Here is Bob Cole. Okay, Dick, and they go to center ice for the start of the third period. 
with the Red Army team leading 6-1. to one. And John Stone of the Rangers has 1 minute and 11 seconds remaining in his penalty. He went off for slashing at 19-11. In the second period, now we're set to go. Red Army with a man advantage. Again controlling in their own zone. Mikhailov is coming back for it. He's back to the net. Swoops out with it. Here he comes, leading the attack straight up through the middle. Mikhailov trying to go through. Nearly did. It was stopped by Greshner. And then Kachuk down the left side decides to shoot it over on an open wing. And Gusev for Red Army in front of his own net. He's lining it up. He's a big one. Comes to center. Passes off on the right way. They clear it into the corner. Vasilyev couldn't move it. He lost his stick. And the play is called in the Rangers zone. I think a penalty coming up to Vasilyev of the Red Army. Number two. Well, I'm sure the Rangers will take that one. I think he said number two. We had a microphone down there, Harry, for the Soviet official, but it's number five. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute, he even confused the announcers. Well, they're announcing it, Gusev, but it's Vasilyev, number five. He's just doing what the referee told him to do. They all look the same. <laughs> There's the correction. Now they're five aside. 38 seconds, the time of that penalty to Vasilyev of Red Army. And it's Gilbert coming out over the line at center ice. Gilbert trying to go all the way with it. Gusev couldn't stop him. He got in front and lost it against Mikhailov. Mikhailov in front of his own net. The pass went over Petrov's stick down the ice. This will be icing as Beverly picks it up. Now well, the New York Ranger bench, they have people like Dunk Wilson, Jill Marat, and Pat Hickey on the injury list. Bill Collins is in uniform, but has not played, just coming back off a lengthy injury. I have the feeling that if Wilson were in uniform, he might have come in to back up uh, John Davidson by this time, but he is uh, ill. He had an appendicitis attack. Doug Sotar, the backup goaltender out of the Edmonton Juniors, he has played only 16 minutes of NHL action. Pretty tough to put him in his spot. Now that day, from the point, a pass didn't work for Gilbert. Petrov comes out over the line, hands it off. To Mikhailov, he dropped it back in his own zone. And the Soviet team controlling it with Mikhailov in the center ice area. A knee play for Petrov over on the wing and coming in. Mikhailov decides to come out with it again. Mikhailov turning around, pulls away from Esposito, still has it. This is Boris Mikhailov, the captain of this team. And he's putting on a show, but finally Esposito knocked it away from him. Esposito is now being called on the play. Well, the two team captains who exchanged gifts in friendly fashion before the game began got involved there. Harry, I think in Phil's case, that's got to be a little bit of frustration. Perhaps, perhaps. I think he was being hooked a little bit. Here's the hook under his chin, too. Bothered him a little. Here's the elbow. That was over the chin. <laughs> That's why he got two and the other one didn't. <laughs> Minute 40, the time of the penalty to Esposito. Carol Vadney out there again, I think has been the strongest ranger on the ice. Right, right. I've been impressed with the an occasion with Wayne Dillon and uh, Young Holland. Uh, they have worked hard, the youngsters playing on the same line. That's a close call. Now Satcharak, number five for the Rangers, shoots it off the boards to center ice. Sagankov played it up ahead, coming in, Vikulov. Gets set, drops it back. The pass went right to the Rangers, and Gilbert is coming out. He's in with Stemkowski and Satcharak. Couldn't make the play for Satcharak. And Vikulov turning for Red Army, coming in with a long shot. Davidson stopped at the rebound, and he nearly put that one on the net. Gilbert, back of the goal. Looks around as he starts away, dropped it in front of the net. Satcharak gives it back to him. Gilbert across center in on the wing, Stemkowski. Stemkowski cuts for the net and centered it, but they cover up. Volchenkov moved it away from the danger area. Volchenkov's pass is stopped. Satcher, I got a goal! And Tretniak looked good with that save as he kicked out the right leg. Nearing the three-minute mark of the third period, 6-1 to one is the score, Red Army leading. Shuktov goes back of his own net. Shuktov waiting as the Russians are changing as the play goes on. Now they bring it out. 
Coming out over the line, Vasiliev, the play up to Mikhailov, and he backtracks with it. Mikhailov looking for the open. Dropped it over the other way for Petrov. Petrov at center ice. Waits for a moment. Now he gets away from Kachuk. Plays it into Harlamov. Harlamov cuts for the net. He was tied up this time. He scored a beautiful goal earlier. Petrov scores! Petrov, a bullet shot to the glove side of Davidson. And it's 7-1. to one. Harry, I was noticing this morning watching the Soviets work out the way they were going to the slap shot. And here's a perfect example. Right. He doesn't take his stick back too far, though, but he does slap it. Something they didn't do a few years ago. Now Petrov's the one who scored that goal on a very quick shot from much closer range earlier in the second period to make it 4-1. to one. And here, from just inside the blue line, he winds up and lets it go, and it's 7-1 to one for the Central Red Army. Now Red Army offside. Alsip carrying it in. Karlamov was double teamed on that last goal, and that left Petrov open. Now Jarrett, the pass out for Middleton, went by him down the ice. He tries to chase it. Volchenkov was there first, and Red Army clearing it again. On the boards, Volchenkov moved it out. Now Popov is circling in front of his own net. Popov dropped it back. Solodukin around the goal. Solodukin in front of the net. Luzkin, a pass ahead. And it's Malsev coming up over the line. Malsev dropping it near the blue line. There's that passing play again. Right in front, it comes Popov playing it over there. Malsev was muscled off the puck. And the Rangers clearing it. They're trailing by six goals. Middleton has stopped. Trying to carry on was Wayne Dillon. He was taken out of the play, and Popov swings back again. Up at center ice. Popov going in, and he was hammered away by Jarrett. He really hit him with a heavy, solid body check. Rangers, Jarrett, long pass. Middleton was covered. Malsev to Solodukin. Solodukin back near his own blue line. Shoots it back for Kuzkin. On the boards, Popov again. And he was stopped near the line. Now Jarrett at center ice. He's coming in with Holland. Jarrett had his stick lifted from behind and didn't get the shot away. Malsev doing good checking. Popov is offside, and it's called back. Doug Jarrett, who was in the penalty box way back in the first period when the Soviets scored their first of seven straight, really lays a check on Popov that time as he cut across. But all to no avail, really, with the score being 7-1 to against Ron Stewart's New York Rangers. And I think this has to whet the appetite a little bit for Wednesday night in Montreal. I'll say so. A long shot. Petgak stopping it offside with the Rangers. From New York, Super Series 76. The next Series A Olympic lottery will be almost nine and a half million dollars. Skidoo has just bought a pool of 10,000 consecutive tickets. We bought them for you. All purchases of a new 1976 Olympic snowmobile from Skidoo, bought before this December 31st, will receive a registered certificate, which guarantees an equal share of everything these 10,000 tickets win. The 76 Skidoo lottery pool. Get your share of it at your Skidoo dealer. Esposito looking around, waiting for this face-off. It comes up just outside the Soviet blue line. And they played 450 of the third period. 7-1, to one, Red Army. Polis lost a chance to move it in. Esposito couldn't reach it. Now Polis. Oh, and that center ranks. Alexandrov, make that Mikulov who was hammered. As the Ranger defense begins to throw the muscle around. And here's Johnstone coming in. Around the net he goes. Johnstone in the corner. Comes out front at the rim of the circle. Johnstone near the blue line. Nikolov can't stop him. Now the play the other way. Marsky took the shot. And the play is called. Now well, as Bob mentioned, the Rangers are starting to toss the weight around. A moment or so ago, he's... Uh... Doug Jarrett tossed a pretty good check. We just saw another one right here. Now Bednarski couldn't trap it inside the line from center. He backhands it in. It's booted out to center ice. That's a good play. A new one. Up near the Ranger goal. They can't go through. And again, they have to go back for it. 
Kinko just played at the center. Now the Rangers are really hitting. Mikulov just took another check. Esposito was muscled off the puck by Sagankov. Kinko shoots it in. It's in wide of the Rangers. Ned Davis stopped it behind the goal. Now comes in front of Kulov. Got in front of the crease. But he was covered. And Esposito coming out. A long pass for Polis. He's upended. And the play is called as Tretniak stopped it and held on to it. There are four games being played elsewhere in the National Hockey League tonight, and the only out-of-town score we've received here in New York comes from Philadelphia, where Harry Simmons' Boston Bruins are tied 2-2 with the Flyers. And, Harry, we certainly appreciate you joining us tonight. I know that uh, you have more than a passing interest in what's happening down at the Spectrum. I've got one ear on that team. Try to give it a final if we can. Give it to you if it's good news. I can take it. <laughs> they saw comes to the right of Trepiak. And here it is. It shoots. To the side of the net, a backhand shot stopped by Tretiak. Stankowski couldn't jam it in. Tretiak really holding the post on that short side. He's, uh, his goaltending has really, really been refined. And now she takes the drive. Look at that glove save right there by Tretiak, and he gets a hand from the Ranger fan. Harry, your team beat him for 31 goals in the eight games played in 72. And you know, I, I don't wonder if he had his bad moments in that series, but as you say, he is very sharp. Arlamov is racing to center at a stop, but Petrov has the loose puck near his own line. Nearly lost it to Stemkowski. Covering up was Vasilyev. And now, Gusev. Nice move by Gusev. Vasilyev got his pass. He's coming up to center. Harlamov on the right side. A nice move at the line of Petrov. Petrov back in front. A quick shot by Mikhailov is blocked. And the Rangers, trailing by six goals, come right back to Stemkowski. Stemkowski is stopped. But carrying on his back day, going in. And Petrov came out to cover the angle. And Petrov hangs on to it. Now, Carol Vadne, as Harry mentioned, probably the outstanding Ranger in this game. He's worked very hard. He gets the chance here on the left side, but as he lets the shot go right from the spot, no angle at all. Tretiak comes out and covers up. Harry, you've had a couple of shots on the bench of the Soviet head coach, Konstantin Laktev. You go back with him a few years, don't you? Yes, I remember him, and he was a, he was a great player for their national team back in the 50s. Jarrett takes a shot. It's in wide of the net, coming out on the left wing. Pop off. He stops near the line. At center ice, Middleton is muscled away by Popov. But now Middleton comes back in. Races in for a shot. Got in front of the net. The rebound, and it's cleared away hurriedly. Now coming back up the line, Solodukin at center in on the wing, Popov. Popov gets away from one check. No, he doesn't. He was grabbed from behind and twisted around. Now the play is called, and it again was gloved to hit. Tonight's game is coming to you from Madison Square Garden. At Radio Shack, we've built this STA-20 realistic receiver to meet some very rigid specifications. AM and FM tuners with lighted dial pointer, inputs for record changer, tape deck, FM tuning meter, stereo and mono switching, semi-blackout dial, and a full 7 watts RMS per channel. Then we finished it in this handsome wood grain case. And today it's on sale at Radio Shack, a $70 saving. Today pay $129.95. Remember, if you didn't buy it at Radio Shack, it isn't realistic. They played seven minutes and 22 seconds. Of the third period, seven to one the score. Red Army over the New York Rangers. And this is the first game of Super Series 76. The Rangers outclassed in this one. At this point, Dillon at center ice. He was stopped. Kuzkin shoots along one Davidson. Took it on one hop. Reschner from the corner, away from Popov. Reschner gets to center ice. Reschner up near the line. Bounces it in. Tretniak stopped it. And Kuzkin in the corner. Got away from Dillon. Kuzkin back to the net. Back hands it over the other side. And it stopped Fairbairn. Tried to center it. He was stopped in the corner by Volchenko. Now it's Popov coming down to center ice. Popov is stopped at the ring to line. And the play is called. Another penalty coming up. Number 10. This is Super Series 76 from New York. Line after line of mountain barriers, half a continent of uncharted wilderness. That's what faced the pathfinders of the Great Pacific Railway on episode one of the National Dream. The great 
Lone Land. I'm Pierre Burton, and I hope you'll be watching. Next Sunday night on CBC. Bill Fairburn of the Rangers has just drawn his team's seventh penalty of the hockey game. He has been sent off for slashing at 8.04. There is the reason why. The Soviets have two of their seven goals on the power play. And they're organizing it again with a face-off coming inside the Ranger blue line. So no doubt this important face-off. If they get the draw, they'll move it around and move it around until somebody is free for a shot. But they don't get the draw. The Rangers send them back. Seven to one, Red Army. As they near the nine-minute mark of the third period. This is Luchenko coming down on the wing. At center ice. They bring it in over the line and shoot it on the net. Davidson. Dirty back of the net. Kowski from the corner. Backhands it down the ice. Fred Keck is out of the goal. He stops it. Here's Sagankov coming out from around the net. Sagankov's pass down the left side. Alexandrov moving in with Shuktov. He was stopped. And then the Rangers nearly got away, but it's cleared ahead. Too far for Stemkowski. Luchenko around the goal. He is stopped. Now he starts the other way. Comes out near the line. The pass stopped at center ice. The Rangers covering up with Jared shooting it back. One minute remaining in the penalty to Fairbairn of the Rangers. 7-1 Red Army over the New York Rangers. Alexandrov's pass up near the line. They bring it in. Mikulov gets set on the boards. Gets it back in front. Sagankov couldn't get a stick near it as Esposito slashed it away. Luchenko is back in his own zone. Luchenko back of the net. Put the brakes on. Plays it up. Red Army changing as the play goes on. Coming to center is Petrov up at center ice. Petrov near the line, just tosses it in. Mikhailov racing it after it, but Badne was here first. Badne then lost it. And on the boards, it was cleared near the blue line and out over by Vickers. Vickers pass to Badne. He has stopped. Again, Red Army coming in. With 16 seconds left in the penalty, this is Harlamov. His pass comes back to him. He didn't see it. Mikhailov at center. Into Petrov. And his shot stopped by Davidson. And he holds it. Wednesday night, this same Central Red Army team will be at the Forum in Montreal to play the Canadians. We'll be on the air, coast to coast in Canada at 7 o'clock Eastern time. There are six players on the Montreal Canadiens who are members of Harry Simmons' Team Canada 72. So they will be getting another shot. And that should be quite a hockey game. They saw coming up to the left of Davidson. Esposito gets set against Petrov. Around the net, but Narski manages to get the puck back to the Soviet blue line. It's dropped back in front of the goal. Gusev is coming out with it. Here he comes. Out to center ice is Gusev. Up near the Ranger line, still has it. Shoots it in back of the goal where Davidson was behind the net to stop it for Bednarski. On the board, Gilbert. A pass to Esposito. Esposito down across the line. He has Vickers with him. And Gilbert, Vickers in. He had a stick lifted by Vasilia, but couldn't shoot it. Now Gilbert was given a jolt as Petrov comes back in, dropped it back to the slot, and it's broken up in front by Vatne. Right back down the ice. Vickers couldn't catch up to it. Vasiliev has it. His pass stopped by Gilbert. In front of the net is Vickers. And he couldn't shoot it. Back for Harlamov. Coming down to center. On the wing with Mikhailov. Cutting for the net. He's around the goal. Mikhailov all the way back to the blue line. Now a pass the other way for Vasiliev. He took the shot. Hit the goal post. Now Petrov gets set. Petrov, a nice move. At the line. Gilbert missed the pass. He was in too far. And Gilbert was bumped by Gilbert. 7 to 1 the score. Red Army leading. And this is Mikhailov back in his own zone behind the net. Mikhailov into the corner. Gets it handed back to him. Quite calmly are the Russians at this moment. Vasilev up near the line. Just tossed it down the ice. A Gilbert with Esposito. Esposito over on the right wing, getting away from Vasilyev in the corner. He centered it, and it's cleared by Tretniak out of the goal. Esposito in on the boards against Vasilyev. Up Red Army coming down with Popov right in front of the net. Popov giving a jolt as he let the pass go. Mikhailov to Popov right in front of Davidson made a big save. The Rangers clearing it. Vic 
Lakers. Just let it go by him down the ice. As Celia coming back out slowly, decides to go back with it and does. Alchenkov standing in front of him, but the pass went to Saladukin. Now Saladukin up on the wing. Here they come, down to center, Alexandrov and Popov. Saladukin was stopped. The Rangers at center. Shoot it in on the boards. Bear Bear knocked it back to the net. And Kuzkin is the first one back. Kuzkin nearly lost. He got it out. Narski was the one who seemed to want to get involved after the fact. Here's the referee calling the original penalty with 7.18 remaining in the third period. The score, the Soviet Red Army 7, the New York Rangers 1. I'm Lloyd Robertson. All year long, those of us who work in the National Newsroom at the CBC receive reports from our correspondents and reporters across the country and around the world. It's not often that we're able to put in perspective for you the major news stories of the year. That's what happens with Reflections 75. On Monday night at 10 o'clock, we'll be covering the international news scene. That's 10.30 in Newfoundland. Canadian news stories on Tuesday night at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 9.30 in Newfoundland. Reflections 75. Well, when all that was over, we have a two-minute cross-checking penalty call on Bill Fairburn of the Rangers. We had the mix-up right after the penalty was called, but that's all. We have it, I think, coming up. Ooh, there's Pednarski's check right there. That was earlier on. I'm sorry. That was a few minutes before that last penalty call. Anyway, at 12.42, it's Fairburn, his second straight penalty here in this third period. Soviets on that last pen penalty didn't really seem to uh, mount much of an offense. Uh, almost deliberately just <coughs> passed the puck back and forth in their own end. Now Kachu shoots it back in the Rangers zone. Narski around the net, played it up on the boards for Kachu. He gets it out over the line. Kuzkin over on the other side. Volchenkov left it there. That army coming back to regroup again. Soledukin with top off the ball set. This is ball save in the zone zone, back of the net, Saladukin. Saladukin coming out in front of the goal, hits the blue line. Saladukin up to center, shoots it in the Rangers zone. Ball save racing it after it, and it's steered away by Davidson. He got away from ball says check right after that. And the Rangers, Bednarski, finding the opening to clear it. 120 remaining in the penalty. Fairbairn, he's off for cross-checking. Red Army coming out again. This is Popov on the wing with Saladukin and Malsev. The Rangers breaking it up with Vatne. Vatne clears it through the two defensemen at the blue line down the ice. But Yag out of the goal. He steered away for Kuzkin. Kuzkin left it for Malsev on the boards. Malsev the other way. Popov has to come back with it. Vladimir Popov circles in front of the goal. Stick handles away from Kachuk at center ice. Popov and Saladukin going in. Popov couldn't go all the way as he tried. And Kitschuk takes over for New York. He stops, goes back to get away from Malsev. Into the corner on the boards. It's clear near the line of the Rangers. Kitschuk coming out. He's up to center ice. Badney is with him. Kitschuk took the shot. Petnack stopped it. Badney is after the rebound along the boards, and he has it. Badney took an easy, weak shot. Petnack steered it away. 14 seconds left in the Ranger penalty. Red Army coming down to center ice. They're leading 7 to 1. Going right in on goal. And clearing it off in the corner. Malsev is belted. He couldn't get his shot. And then Esposito comes out as Fairburn joins him from the penalty box. And he's offside. And it's called. Well, Phil Esposito, one of two members of the Rangers team here tonight who played for Team Canada 72. The other, Rod Gilbert. As I mentioned, six members of the Canadians on Team Canada. They had six in the initial stages. One was Frank Mahovlich. Uh, he has gone to the WHA, but Don Horry now with the team also played on Team Canada. Alexandrov down across the line. Alexandrov gets set to make a play and does to Luchenkov. And his shot deflected high among the spectators behind the Ranger goal. Good solid wrist shot. They are shooting that puck well from the points. I didn't feel in 72 that they, they shot uh, as often from the points as they might have. Uh, they appear to have added that to their repertoire. Now 
Wichita that center ice for Red Army gets the draw but by Davidson. In the corner quickly is Vickers. He drops it there. And the Rangers starting out. Garrett's long pass was too far for Gilbert. This will be icing as Luchenko goes back to touch it. Game one of Super Series 76 is coming to you from Madison Square Garden. You there at that table, roll with us. You there by that cradle, roll with us. Riding on a snowmobile, or working on a potter's wheel. Come on, everybody, grow with us. The Bank of Nova Scotia, where ordinary savings turn into important investments. Come on, everybody, grow with us. Grow with us. Picture tells it all. Ron Stewart uh, dejected back of that hockey stick. His team trailing seven to one. We have 4:48 left in the game. And now from the faceoff in the corner, Garrett tipped it the other way. Luchenko stops it at the blue line. Took a shot. That was a way off the Ranger net. Victor's coming out with Esposito. He took the pass on his skate. Gave it to Gilbert. Gilbert in with a drive. Petniak loved that. He'll hold it again. And they get a whistle. There's a true. Russian atmosphere around the Madison Square Garden complex these days. The Moscow Circus is playing in the Jason Felt Forum. And then one chap, we had a shot of him earlier, all dressed up uh, like a Cossack. I uh, think he was a fugitive from the circus, must have slipped out between acts as part of the hockey game. And now, four and a half minutes left. Jill Bear is going to shoot! Oh, what a shot by Jill Bear! Well, very basic here. Harry with Desposito winning the faceoff, and Jill Bear just letting it go. Very basic, but it was a, a beautiful, clean draw by Esposito back to uh, Gilbert. I was about to remark in the last topic to play that the one area the Rangers were holding their own were on the faceoffs, and uh, uh, Espo sure won that one neatly back to Gilbert. Gilbert can shoot him, and he got that one away quickly. No chance for trading. And Esposito also got an assist on this one. Good year again. Number 10 is on for the first time of the game. He's offside. There's a close up of Trechak right here. And the goal, still there from Esposito, was scored at 15 30. Harry said, no chance for the Soviet goaltender. Oh, that was a bullet drive by Gilbert. Trechak still shaking his head over that. 4.20 remaining in the hockey game. 7 to 2 the score, Red Army out front. Now Gretschner cuts for the net, he centered it. It comes all the way back to Balchkov, who's also on for his first turn. And it's Kudir get going in with Popov. Popov gets in front, slides one by the open side. Into the corner, Gilbert is after it. Gilbert moved it back of his own goal. He and Balchkov up together. period, Rod Gilbert slashed at a Soviet player. I don't know why he didn't get a penalty on that particular occasion. And right here, Rod, obviously a little upset. There's a ball on the ice, and Vasiliev's trying to handle it, and he can't handle it too well. Maybe we should use a <laughs> ball against this team. <laughs> what do we got here? Are there penalties to be assessed? The referee finally... No, there's no penalty. But yes. Alchkov is off for Red Army. He's automatic. He looked at the Ranger player for the penalty. Well, it was he Dick, who gave Gilbert the runaround to the side of the net. Gilbert tried to retaliate. I guess he missed him when he came back at him. Boschkov is off. 16.05. 7-2 Red Army. And again, the Rangers with a man advantage. Badnay in his own zone. His pass to the line, out to center is Esposito, coming in with Vickers. Vickers back to Esposito, right in, a nice play for Schilder. And he was tied up, couldn't get the backhander away. Red Army bringing it out, Petrov at center ice. He decides to leg it back towards center, and does. Mikhailov back near his own line, up to Petrov. Petrov took the pass near the center ice red line, play goes right on. Over on the other side, they play it back inside their own blue line, and Gusev hooked the high one down through the middle, and it bounces near the Ranger blue line. Satcharak gave it to Badne. Now Satcharak again, looking for Esposito and Badne, and Badne gets the pass out to center ice. 
Broken up, Gilbert lost it against Mikhailov. Mikhailov right back in his own zone. Soviet Red Army killing seconds on this penalty. Now Badne intercepting. Oh, that high drive was wide. Back of the goal, Gusev, and he was bumped by Gilbert. Vickers went in to help out. Vickers can't get away. He was too well covered. And it's Badne again knocking it down near the blue line. Badne's pass to Satchrock in center ice. He fell. And Mikhailov lost it. Esposito coming in with Vickers. Right in front is Badne. And his backhander is stopped by Tretyak. At center ice. With 2.20 remaining in the game. Satchrock gallops in. He pulls his way through. Took a shot. And that's stopped by Tretyak. The Rangers seem to find luck. for the Rangers late in the game as they score two in a row. Perry Phil had some chances like that earlier in the game and Tritjak stopped him. That time he was found the short side. He did. He got it away so quickly that uh, Tritjak wasn't able to set himself at all. I think you'll see a release of the puck here as quickly as anybody can do it. Good wrist shot quickly. Camera couldn't even pick it up. Well, Esposito has been in all three scoring plays for the Rangers now. Scoring that one. Ikulov coming in. A quick shot, Jameis. Davison stops, and right away they lift it over the glass. From New York, Super Series 76. The seventh draw will be held January 25th. An Olympic lottery ticket is a gift that offers millions of ways to wish everyone happy holidays. Ways like three prizes of $1 million each, almost $28 and $1.5 million total prize money. Special holiday gift envelopes are available. You can do your shopping and your gift wrapping at the same time in the same place. Buy your tickets today. When wrapping and your gift wrapping at the same time in the same place. Buy your tickets today. Win a million cash tax-free. Think how great your new year would be. <laughs> by Phil Esposito was scored on a New York power play. Earlier in the game, I said the Soviets had two power play goals. They have three. Petrov's goal in this period was, while well, the Rangers were a man short with Esposito in the penalty box. Well, the face-off, the Rangers, Demkowski, a pass out to center ice. Kachuk looks ahead, and it's Demkowski breaking through the net. That can the rebound. And Middleton was too well covered. They keep it in. Jared with Demkowski. Now it's Kachuk. Yeah. The Rangers are really pouring it on now. Middleton could jam it in. Back of the goal. They cover up. And clear it down to center ice again. Nikulov is coming in for Red Army. He stops as Alexandrov with him. And Breschner broke it up. Breschner coming back. A pass to the other side for Middleton going in. And he put Breschner. And he fell before he could shoot it. Breschner centered it and gets it handed back to him. Now Powell's in the corner. He tried to work it in for Middleton. Middleton had a great shot away. Good chance for Middleton. Harry, somebody walking into this building right now really wouldn't get a true picture of how the game has basically gone. The Rangers. Uh, well, we're getting a good chance to, to look at uh, the weakness, which I think is a weakness of the Soviet team. And that's around their own goal and in their own end. They, they do have a weakness there, and a team that can take advantage of that is going to have a chance against them. A good chance. We'll beat them. Now, Dylan. And here's a shot by John Stone. That was stopped. Petyak being very busy now and harassed here in the late stages of the game. 56 seconds remaining. 7 to 3, Red Army. And the Rangers trying to muster some power to make it look a little more respectable. Down by four goals. Getting set for this face-off. Here it comes. Back to the line. And Johnstone shot. Stopped by Tretiak. Again, a face-off to his left. Two clean draws in a row for Wayne Dillon. Back to Johnstone. Two good shots. Now it comes back to 
Johnstone again. He's turning around here. The faceoff spot slides it in front, and it brings the goalpost off the stick of Polis. Polis trying to set up Johnstone near the side of the net. Volchkov couldn't clear it out. The Rangers keep it in. Here's Polis with a chance, and he just couldn't get on track. Now down on the left wing, it's cleared over on the right side of Volchkov. Volchkov, Volchkov lost the helmet, but carries on. is getting called for the elbow. Greg Polis Number two. wants to get at the referee. Two, you know. For some reason or other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there you have it. The conversation, Matt Pavlich and Yuri Karendin, the referee, and they get it sorted out. Who's in the penalty box? It's Polis and Vadney, both. Where am I mixed up? It looks like two Rangers in there. Oh. Polis is in there, and I think you're right, Dick. Greg Polis. No. Hold, please. Batendun, five minutes. Five minutes. Batendun. Yeah, okay. So there's Number a butt ending penalty there as well. We'll get this sorted out. I can't see from my angle, Bob, but I think there are two Rangers in there. I think our interpreter in the penalty box is left early. All right, there it is. Matt Pavlich in, in broken Russian straighten that one out. Polis gets two, and Vadnay gets five. Vadnay gets a butt-ending penalty. 1938, the time of the penalties. Now Volchkov sending the Rangers back. Pressure behind the goal. Handles up near the line. Comes back again. Esposito looked back at one of the Soviet players. Now he's ragging the puck in his own zone. Took a shot at hit Volchkov. And the buzzer goes. The game is over. 7-3 Red Army over the New York Rangers in the first of Super Series 76. And just a smidgen of bad feeling uh, beginning to simmer as the handshake takes place. Harry, this is one time in the first series they do shake hands. First game of the series. An oversight before. Certainly, it wasn't on purpose. Well, it's the tradition that we have to get used to when we get these international games. So there you see it. It's the spirit of goodwill at this point. The total shots. The Rangers have shot them 41 to 29. Well, in any game I've ever been in, his goals that count. But the Rangers right. did put on a pretty good uh, uh, shooting display in the last five minutes of that game. As a result of good hard forechecking, they took advantage of the vulnerability of the Soviet team in their own end, and, and we're getting good clear shots. So that's it. The final score is seven to three as the Central Red Army defeats the New York Rangers in just a moment. Our three-star selection. There are many sides to the Canadian forces. The sea is one of them. On, under, or over the sea, the Canadian Forces is a team of specialists working together, ready to meet any civilian or military call. A responsibility to be shared. A chance to travel. Something to be proud of.